Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Movie Know It All podcast here on RGV Titan Radio. We are the 956. We are your hosts. I am Will. And I'm Bob. And I'm giving you a choice. You either put on these glasses or start eating that trash can. <laughs> You know, man, it never, it never uh, uh, seems to amaze me how you always end up putting putting a line from whatever movie we're doing into like normal conversation. <laughs> it's, like, it's you, a, you have a gift for that. It's man. a horrific habit. That's, <laughs> well, that's what my psychiatrist would say. <laughs> yeah. They stop doing that, and I'm like, "Well, make me an offer. I can't refuse." And then he smacks me in the face for it. And I go to my psychiatrist, and he's like, "I, I can't. I just can't." Like, no, not today, not today. Our psychiatrist so, should have a podcast. <laughs> exactly, right? I'd listen to it. <laughs> I'd listen to it. She would save me 500 bucks a week. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, we're here at another episode of the Movie Know It All podcast, man. How how was, uh, how was your week, man? How's, how's everything going so far in the year 2020? I mean, it's a week. Yeah. But it's the same old, same old. Yeah. You know, just doing, doing what I can to survive and mm. the people I work for ensuring that I can't. You know, it's, it's, we, we, uh, I don't know if everybody at home knows this, but we all have normal everyday lives that we go to. We yeah. don't just spend all day talking about movies, no matter how much we want to. I'd really like to. You know, <laughs> we go around having our normal lives and, and we get to come here and we get to talk movies with, uh, you guys, uh, coming up, uh, soon. We're going to have the, uh, the WrestleFest, which is coming up this week. And I don't, this, this episode is probably going to go, go on after the, uh, uh, the WrestleFest happens, but, when we do come back, we're gonna have you know all the news from from that uh, yeah from that, from that thing. We're they gonna got some really good matches set up now, man. Like, I had I had seen that yeah, man. I saw Masato was gonna be there. I had no yeah. idea Masato was gonna be there. Apparently like, he was wow. a late he was a late addition, wasn't yeah, he? Yeah. yeah, that dude's amazing, man. He's gonna be facing Brian Cage, uh, which is yeah. gonna be great. Which you called that? Didn't yeah, you call it? I was like, I'm hoping Brian it? Cage will have a match that day. Like that's <laughs> awesome. They're gonna have yeah. a, um, our uh, I think every. Um, Hour, but at the half hour. Yeah. Okay. Like they're gonna have matches. Uh, okay. I, believe. I think the first match is up at eleven thirty. Man, that's gonna be so awesome. Dude. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I guess I guess this month is kind of uh, uh, slowly but surely turning into a uh, uh, wrestlers and movies month. It looks like it. Because uh, the next movie that we're gonna be talking about is my all time favorite John Carpenter movie, They Live. Oh, Man, God, what a great movie. Now this movie came out in nineteen eighty eight, and this was. This movie came out at the height of what is called the rock and wrestling revolution. Yeah, absolutely. When uh, WWF at the time was basically taking over America when it comes to wrestling, they had uh, mainstream. Yeah, they were turning mainstream. Uh, they had they had gotten Hulk Hogan. Uh, they had Roddy Piper. They had uh, um, like Andre the Giant was his career was was basically uh, uh on the way down as, as these yeah, other guys yeah. were, were coming up yeah uh you know classic you know rick flair was was in the wwf at the time uh, the wcw world title <laughs> yeah exactly it's cold <laughs> it's cold blooded so like this is at the height of that man and and honestly the only person the only wrestler at the time that was you know above uh that was over enough to actually break through was Hulk Hogan. He had started right. uh, coming out of movies and TV shows and stuff. He had just done uh, Rocky three. Was it Rocky three? Yeah. Or well, Rocky that 4? was Rocky three was when he was still with, um, I want to say it was Jim Crockett promotions. Yeah. Like he was, he, he like Rocky three was where Vince McMahon said like him. Like I want Okay. Him. Yeah. So, and, and at the time I, and I remember this very vividly, they had a Saturday morning cartoon called, uh, Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling. Oh yeah. yeah. Okay. You know, and, Roddy Piper was the bad guy. Yeah. Roddy Piper was the bad guy. I forgot and about that show. I don't know who voiced him, but I do know that, that, uh, uh, a uh, Brad, um, oh, shoot. What's his name? The older brother from, uh, everybody loves Raymond. Brad Armstrong? No, 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 no. Um, uh, anyway, I forgot. He's he voiced Hulk Hogan in that cartoon. I'll always, I'll really? Remember. Yeah, that's yeah, weird. He, he voiced Hulk Hogan that. in that cartoon. The older brother from Everybody Loves Raymond. I Raymond. You know that guy. <laughs> oh my God, Raymond. <laughs> so we're gonna be we are gonna be talking about They Live. It's a uh, 1988 uh, sci-fi. Uh, would you call it a horror? Or would you call it more of a suspense thriller? That's kind more of? of a sci-fi suspense movie. Yeah, like, I wouldn't call it a horror movie, but man, it it, it really rides that line. So it's it's um. It it 
takes place during the height of, of the Reagan era. And there was a lot of, I mean, and there was a cold war going on. Word life. And this is basic Reaganomics. <laughs> you know, exactly. And, and they, and it, there was this whole mentality in America of, yes, we, we were, we were at our economic heights, but there was also a, a, a lower level going the, in. There's a lot of people who could see the writing on the wall. Yeah. Like, yeah. Unfortunately, the writing on the wall is all that's left of the wall now. <laughs> exactly. And so, so we build a great, big, beautiful one. <laughs> <laughs> and they they uh they tried to tear it down in 1989 and apparently they succeeded but you know where you build one wall they build two in its place yes so, you tear man. down one wall they build two in its place so tear um, down this wall <laughs> john carpenter had actually uh written this uh uh written this script after he read a uh, a short story by uh um by an author named ray nelson called uh, yeah. eight o'clock in the morning Mm-hmm. Okay, and it was a short story that was within a larger book called Nada, mm-hmm. and they turned that into a comic book. That that that's what uh, John Carpenter read, but it was about this guy who was um, he was I believe his name was Richard Armitage in the in the in the comics in the comics. Oh, they right actually on. gave him a name. Oh right, and on. he had a, he went to a, a, a hypnotist mm-hmm. and he got hypnotized, and that's how he started seeing all the aliens around and everything. Yeah, see that he gets got really con- that gets really convoluted. You would need a book. To yeah. tell that kind of story because like to do that in a movie everybody would have yeah. movie would have taken a giant shit on itself have you yeah. done that yeah and and this movie is only about an hour and a half long it's a really short movie yeah it's so, weird like so, it was so much shorter than i remembered it being yeah right and and like i'm watching it and i'm seeing them go through all this this uh uh, uh it's it's a slow burn kind of film yeah right but, but like it's only the burn is so good yeah it's so good man and uh, funny, funny thing about the about the Arthur uh, Ray Nelson, he actually invented the propeller beanie. Really? I don't know if you know about uh, if, yeah, if you remember the, those. Yeah, the Dunce beanie. Yeah, yeah, in fact, he thinks that that's his claim to fame. Not not writing the 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 eight o'clock in the morning story, but he thinks that the claim his claim to fame uh, was was he, the propeller he, beanie. He might be right. I don't know. Like, yeah. it's, it's kind of hard to. Man, what a weird line to to write on that one, isn't it? <laughs> like know, that right? that would be like 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 if somebody were to come to you and they're like, "I wrote a tale of two cities, but I also made that little spring action toy that you just squeeze <laughs> and then it pops and jumps really high." Like, yeah, it's it's just but, like saying that the that the bass player from the Monkees, his mom invented liquid paper. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm here all night. I see what you gentlemen. did. I see what yeah. you did there. So um, I liked it. So yeah, man, this 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 movie is it's it's. F- Filled with political commentary, man. Big time. Like dude. the further we come, we go from like 1988. Uh-huh. The fucking scarier that movie becomes. And and that's the thing is that it was extremely relevant at the time, 1988, when it came out. And then as time goes on, it's becoming. It, it keeps getting relevant, especially with the advent of technology. Right. Especially it's with even scarier with, with the internet and cell phones and everything. And as I'm looking at my cell phone right now, like right. We, we there there's there's this. There's this. Uh, We're on um, the internet right now. Will. Exactly. <laughs> you guys are listening to us from the internet. Who knows? We're penetrating your brains right now. And, ju- our- and just so you know, you're not crazy. Mm-hmm. They are out to get you, and they are outside your doors right now. Ah ha! No, <laughs> that was good. So, <laughs> almost scared myself. <laughs> so we start out with uh, with with this this. Uh, um it, it's like it's like a wall, and on the wall is the name of the movie. Yeah, just right? they live on the wall, and and I think I think that wall represents everything that you need to know about about the tone. Yeah, and and what's what's going to happen in this movie? What a great first image, isn't it's, it? It's such like, a fantastic it, it, first it's image. It's very telling of what the movie is about. Yeah, to become. like and and it's it's this it's like like the the, the streets. It's, it's, it's a gra- streets. it's a graffiti warning. Yeah, like, yeah. It's all it is is a graffiti warning. Like and, they live. Yeah, it, and it, and it's it's uh, and you see stuff like this if you go to the big city if you go to like. Uh, um, uh, uh, run down the crepit areas of the city. You see, like, like uh, graffiti, like they live, or, or they're mm-hmm. like, you know, uh, uh, paranoid writings on the wall. Yeah, you know. So uh, we see Roddy Piper, uh, who's not given a name in this movie. Yeah, I found that really interesting. They dude. never refer to him by name. He never says his name, and the he's credits credited he's re- as credit as Nada. Yeah. Which everybody down here knows is Spanish for nothing. for everything. I mean nothing, <laughs> and <laughs> and um, it just shows him walking down the street, man. Like just 
you know, uh, uh, I guess he's homeless. He's just, you know, like the, he's the man trying to try to live the American dream. He even says yeah. he even says it at one point. Yeah. Where he's like, I believe in the American dream. Like, yeah. I, 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 I do my job. I work hard and I mind my own business. He's waiting for his break in life. Yeah. Which is kind of the the tone that most people can like understand to, yeah, yeah you can really relate to like i'm just waiting for my break in mm. life like i'm doing everything i can like i don't break any laws i mind my business like i'm yeah. just waiting for my break and yeah. like some of those some people are fortunate enough to like find their break in life sometimes and those are the people that usually become really jaded and yeah. are like they don't want to share in their wealth like anybody's <laughs> exactly. going after their wealth Exactly. Like, I'm not and coming after your 70000 a year, bro. Like, relax. I forgot who had said this, but um, I believe somebody somebody said, I, th I think I know who said this, and I'm not going to say their name because whatever, but I still think that the saying holds up, mm -hmm. is if you make it to the top, always remember to send the elevator back down. Right, right. You know? And, and this guy, he's he's very much down on his luck, but he comes across as... as like he's not defeated by the world. Yeah, like the world hasn't you know? beaten him yet. Yeah, the world hasn't be even though like he's he's obviously middle aged. He's obviously like in probably the best shape he'll ever be in his life. Dude, like, he was. I, like, yeah. When I was watching that today, I was like, holy shit, yeah, dude, Roddy Piper was buff because in yeah. WCW, man, he couldn't give a shit. Yeah, he let himself go. Like homeboy was eating cheeseburgers <laughs> yeah. on the weekly. And it's funny, man, because I remember Roddy Piper at this time. He was a heel, and he was very, he was a very flamboyant, very like loud, very uh, energetic yeah. kind of kind it's of. So heel. Weird to see him so restricted, and here he is. Like this, just I think this show shows what, how, how great of a performer he actually was. He really was. He is could have been a really good actor. He's he comes across. He doesn't come across as this larger than life character that he portrays in in the wrestling biz. Mm -hmm. He comes across as this every man, like you said. He comes across as this person who has a past, but he's not being down by it. Like he legitimately, if you watch this movie, and like, and it's so weird because like he's he's such a like like thing that John Carpenter would use in almost everything. But yeah. like, it's such a role for Kurt Russell. That's the thing. It was originally, he originally wanted to get, he wrote the role for Kurt Russell. Fuck, I believe okay. it. Okay. I believe it. But like, holy shit, do I believe that? But yeah. he, he, uh, he got kind of, he got kind of freaked out because like, he didn't want to feel like he was just Over making movies him. for Kurt Russell. Cause yeah. he didn't, he didn't want Kurt Russell in escape from New York. You know yeah. what he originally wanted? Who do you, Tommy who do you, Lee Jones? Really? He I thought, can't see it. No, nah, I couldn't either. I can't see it. He thought Kurt Russell was like, quote unquote, legitimately too pretty for the role. <laughs> like a snake Plissken, like the baddest yeah. of asses. Like my top, one of my top five badasses in movies, like Kurt Russell. Well, and yeah, like man. when I hear the line delivery from Roddy Piper in it, uh -huh. like I can hear Kurt Russell delivering those lines, especially the first time when he's wearing the sunglasses yeah. and he goes, hey, it figures it'd be something like this. <laughs> like I can hear Kurt Russell saying that. Yeah. And it's, it's, oh man. I, I, I think, I movie. think, uh, um, as much as I love Kurt Russell and as much as I can see him uh, probably taking on this role, um, I would think that it, that that it wouldn't be as realistic. And I think no, that's another been. reason why Carpenter chose to, to go a different direction. It, it, it would have felt more like his like out there fantasy movies. Because at, at yeah. this point, he'd used Kurt Russell in Big Trouble in Little China, uh -huh. in The, the Thing. Thing, and Escape. Escape yeah. from New York. Well, all of which are very over the top in like... Yeah, what they are, and this especially one especially big trouble, in especially China. big trouble in Little China when yeah. he does his John Wayne impression for eighty eight minutes. I love it. You know what old yeah. Jack Burton would say in a time like this? <laughs> but like it, 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 this movie is as unrealistic and weird as it is. It's very, very grounded Extremely in reality. Extremely grounded. Yeah, like it's very grounded in reality. It is a, mm. it is a big time movie of like, no, you're not paranoid. It's mm. been us versus them. Yeah, they're winning. And, like, and it just gave them it, instead of giving them a color or a team name, he gave them a whole new fucking face. Yeah, exactly. Which, which, uh, which, God, it's it's a whole other story on its own, uh, which we'll get to. But um, he, th this guy, he's walking down the streets, man, and and all these locations are real. There's not a, like yeah. they don't use any sets whatsoever. Yeah, they use every all single place that, that they that they shoot is actually in L.A. Yeah, and there's a shot where which I love where he's he's walking down the street of like Skid Row or whatever like yeah. like it's, and then the camera pans up and you see the big city in the background. Yeah, like he's Great like shot, like man. he's making his way towards that. And there's a lot of that that uh, symbolism going on, especially in the first twenty minutes. It's a lot of western, like in yeah. what he does. Like John Carpenter really like knew how to shoot western. You know what I know I I. Did didn't even I didn't I didn't even think about that but yeah this is straight up a western most most of his uh, movies film. like like a lot of them really are like take you really got to look at stuff like okay the hateful eight 
Yeah. Awesome Western. Yeah. Like, think about the thing and the setting that was in. Like, it's, it's, yeah. you're stuck in a place with a bunch of people. It's snowing outside yeah. and you can't trust any of them. That's like, what, that's what Quentin Tarantino was like. Yeah. yeah. Like, this is, this is my, this is a Western yeah. thing. And he even got Kirk. Uh, Kurt Russell in it too. Yeah. too. Yeah, who's yeah, doing? Yeah. Who's surprisingly doing his John Wayne impression? <laughs> awesome movie, but like yeah. a little bit more uh, women beating than I would be comfortable with. God, but you know, no kidding. <laughs> like it's so weird because it's like if the if the white guy's not going to be racist, he's going to beat the crap out of the girl. And I'm like, what the hell is wrong with you, dude? Like, <laughs> relax, yeah. bro. So, <laughs> so uh, basically, all the character development that you need for this guy is just him walking down the street. Yeah. Seeing all the all the things that are happening around him, like you, like he walks past the street preacher, mm. who's 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 uh, uh, saying things like, like we're worshiping money, like the government is out to get yeah. us, kind of stuff. And then the cops come and stop him, and he's like, meh, and he, and he like walks off. Yeah, you know, and and they he even like they they wrecked the little shanty town that they've created. Yeah, like they these people created a shanty town like in the middle of like this empty field. Yeah. And like, and it's, and like just watching it today, I was like, man, dude, I saw a report about like cops ripping apart tents. Not too long yeah, ago. Yeah, they do that. Like man. outside of free, it's freezing cold in these yeah. cities, like out in Detroit and they're tearing tents apart. Yeah. Like what, what is that? How does that help anybody? Like not, they're killing people. Dude. Not only that, man, but like they, they, uh, they make it a point to put like, like, uh, uh, a, a divider in between yeah. benches. Yeah. They put a little spike thing. You know, those things yeah. that they use to keep birds off of statues. Yeah. They, they put, put on those benches. on the floor and stuff. Yeah. Up on benches it's cruel, and stuff. dude. Like it's it's very cruel. Like and, it's, it's and insanely and vile. And it's like this fucking movie came out in 1988. <laughs> like they were warning us. It feels really fucked yeah. up. Like I said, the further we come from that movie, yeah. Like the more real and like weird and uncomfortable it feels. We're all one hospital bill. A lot of us are. A lot of us are a hospital bill away from like complete financial yeah. ruin. And and uh, you mentioned the shanty town man and uh he uh he gets a job at a construction site along with the great uh Keith David. Oh, man, and I love um, him so much in this Keith movie. David was was nice enough to be like, "Hey, uh you need a place to stay. I know a place." Yeah. And he takes him to the shanty town. Yeah. All the people in the shanty town, they don't look like your typical homeless people. No. There are families, there there are, there are women, there are children, there are like uh they don't look like they've been homeless for long. No, they don't. And and the the it seems like this big uh um that's where community every, where everybody does their part, mm. everybody makes the food, and you know that's where everyone's waiting for all the money to trickle down. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> and and you know they they're not they're not totally without anything. You know they have no, TVs yeah. and you know they have their clothes, they have their 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 stuff or whatever. But they are down on their luck, mm -hmm. okay? And they're really threats to nobody, right? Yeah. So when um, except the ones who think exactly. So he, here's the thing, man. So he goes from uh, he, he's he's there working and he's a very observant person apparently because he notices people walking to him from the, the, the yeah. church that are, that's across the street. Yeah. Curiosity gets the best of him. He walks across the street and he sees that, that, uh, there's, there's nobody in there. He sees mm -hmm. like a little lab with, with, uh, with sunglasses all over the place. Yeah. Right. And he doesn't know what's, what's, uh, what's going on. The, the thing I, the scene, I, the part I like about that scene though is when, cause he, he barters with some guy for a pair of binoculars. To watch yeah, him yeah, across a, the street. a kid, the kid. Yeah, uh, and like Keith David comes up to him and he's like, "What are you doing?" And he's yeah. like, "Look at, like, check this out." And he's like, "I'm not looking through those binoculars." Yeah, and he's like, "Look, man, like, I don't, I don't get in anybody's business. Nobody gets in mine." Yeah. Like, I got a, all the time. I got a wife and kid. I, I don't, wife I don't, kids, I don't want to. We yeah. never meet his wife and kids, but no. he constantly says it, and that's the thing that I really like about the characters in this movie is everybody's stripped to the bare bones of yeah. I can relate to that. Yeah, like, and I really dig that. Like, yeah. you can relate to Nada. Mm -hmm. he, he does need to have a name because yeah. you can relate to that person who just wants to like, he's just waiting for his break in life. I'm just trying to like, just stay, just stay low and just do my work. And yeah. hopefully somebody notices that I'm good at my work yeah. and they'll pay me for it. Exactly. And like, that's how most of us live. That's how the majority mm -hmm. of us live. And that's the whole thing. Especially like, cause I relate so much to Frank, to Keith David's character yeah. about the like, just mind your business, it. like yeah. duck your head and like, Shut your mouth. But that's how we live, man. And that's it's so weird because that's how they want you to live in this room. Yeah. They want you to just shut your mouth, obey, yeah, like fornicate and reproduce. Yeah. Like and and it, it, it also it also I think shows the the difference between 
like I guess you can say that that Nada becomes becomes an activist, and right? Then, and then the regular person, the regular you know, uh, um, a blue collar worker who we just can't they don't care about politics. They don't care about politics. They don't care about Republican Democrat. They don't care about rich whatever. They just want to work. It's right and wrong. Live their life. Yeah, it's right and wrong, man. Like, yeah. That's all it is. Like there's. Fuck, fuck wings on any of this shit. Like it's right <laughs> and wrong. Do you know the goddamn difference? Yeah, exactly. So, so he uh, Nada makes his way into the into the church, and he uh, he finds a um, a recording playing mm-hmm. church music. Yeah, you know, to make it seem like there's people in there, and yeah. then he no- he notices he finds like a little crevice or whatever. Yeah, and he sees a bunch of boxes. Mm-hmm. He doesn't see what's in the boxes yet, but he sees that there's a bunch of boxes in there. And, uh, he, uh, he runs into the preacher and then the preacher, Oh, I, f- I forgot what the preacher oh, tells he's, him, but he's he, blind, the, the blind preacher yeah. guy, he says, he says a good Lord might've taken my eyesight, but he's made me see. Yeah. Which and, is an interesting thought. Yeah. And, uh, he's like, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You know, I didn't mean to, to break. I just, I just want to come in and he, and he leaves. Okay. So. That or or uh, earlier that day, they they were watching a uh, uh, the, proto the Alex TV. Jones. <laughs> yeah, and he, he <laughs> I'm not gonna say, I'm not gonna elaborate on that, man. But but he had he, he was warning them about the chemicals in the water, what it's doing to the frogs. <laughs> yeah, giving giving them a fabulous weekend. So. He they the there's this pirated broadcast that's that's being that's being shown on, on the TV and it's causing people to have headaches and stuff. Yeah, and nobody knows where it's coming from. Yeah, ironically, you, you look. He looks into the church and he sees the room and he sees everybody there and he sees the cameras and stuff yeah. and that everything's going there. Then, um, when when uh, when he's in the church, he sees written on the on the wall, uh, "They live, we sleep." Yeah, right, right. Or uh, we live. Yeah, something like that. They live, we sleep. Yeah, that's what it said. They so, live, we sleep. So he's he's overhearing his conversation in the church, and they mentioned the Hoffman lenses, mm-hmm. and that's what they're called. The, yeah. the, I I I I couldn't find anything uh, in my research of what as those why, meant yeah. as to why they're called the Hoffman I have lenses. No idea either. I'd like to think that they were uh, um, named after Dustin Hoffman uh-huh. because Tootsie had just come out. And, you know, it was like a taxi, little, <laughs> taxi. <laughs> Anyway, good God! <laughs> should have been a, it should have been a box full of those types of glasses, like those Tootsie Granny glasses. Yeah, that'd be awesome. So I'm 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 wondering to myself, man, because the next scene it shows a bunch of a bunch of authority figures show up and just like policy demolish. Man. Yeah, huh? the, the, the policy enforcers. Yeah, like like they 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 demolish the the shanty town and they they burn down the church or like yeah. they they tear up the church. Yeah, like right they're after looking they, for something. Right after they stole Egon's PKE meter. <laughs> Did you catch that? I noticed that, dude. Oh, I noticed that. Man. I was like, oh shit, <laughs> dude. Like, and it's funny because I, I wrote that in a note. It's funny because I didn't notice that until after he was in the in the tunnel. Uh, yeah. Late, later, later in the yeah. in the movie, but and I, I was gonna get to that, but I didn't even know that that, that, that showed up. Yeah, that showed shows up earlier. Up there. <laughs> so they, they're like, um, they're they're just like like beating everybody up, man, and mm-hmm. they're 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 beating the preacher and they're they're beating a. a uh, homeless some, people. The, the the homeless guy's up, man, and and uh, Nada just doesn't know what to do. Like he yeah. he just he just goes off and hides, right? Right, like anybody would. So like he goes he goes back to the uh, to the church, and this is where it starts getting good, man. Mm-hmm. This 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 movie. He goes back and he goes to where to where the all the boxes were, mm-hmm. and he picks up a box and he takes off running. Yeah. And he, he, he ends up in a, uh, uh, I guess, uh, like an alleyway. Yeah. A back alleyway. And uh, which I think is like the only set that they actually built. Yeah. I, I, was, I was about to tell you that. Yeah. I was like, I think that's the only set that they yeah. built. Like was the alley. Yeah. Well, <laughs> a, an outdoor set. Because yeah. They, they also did the. They had the, the interior ones. Yeah. But like the only outdoor set they built was that alley. Like, yeah. It's behind a studio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and like they do such a good job with that set because they, they do revisit it a couple times. Yeah. And like. It's just so much better, but like we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> yeah, so uh, he he gets the box of of uh, he gets the box and he opens it up and it's just a bunch of sunglasses, right? Mm-hmm. And he looks kind of disappointed because I guess he thought that it was gonna be like cash or something in there. Yeah, <laughs> he's like, what the fuck, like sunglasses? Yeah. These aren't even Ray Bans. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were so eighty chic those glasses, man. They were though. 
Like they were, they're the those big chunky. They look like they robbed it. They robbed the set of Terminator. <laughs> <laughs> no man, those sunglasses were cooler, dude. Like, yeah, straight. very, very much. I think so, so too. So, um, the the he puts on the sunglasses and he notices that everything turns black and white, mm-hmm. and they they. The well in, in the movie like like the 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 camera turns black and white like the, the actual yeah. the actual picture turns black and white but I think I think he actually sees black and white because when he first puts on the sunglasses he's looking down on the ground and like he notices that the ground is black and white yeah. and he takes it off a couple of times puts it back on God, that reaction is so genuine isn't like it when, right? he, when he's taking the sunglasses off yeah. on and off like just like what the fuck am I seeing yeah like, I love that his face is so like. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? So like he, the funny thing is that, and this is what makes a it better. Shitty fucking thing to realize too. Like when right? you're realizing it. So like he's he's uh they filmed this scene him reacting with the sunglasses before they shot the alien scenes. They yeah, didn't even yeah. know what the aliens were gonna look like. Yeah, yet. yeah. He still had no idea. So what that's they were all acting, like. and then you see him looking up at the at the the city and all the the signs and the billboards that say obey and you know like this is your god on on the, on the on money, the money yeah, <laughs> which dude. is like everything all, all the little messages are so freaking spot on dude. yeah like it's, it's not it's, even subtle like it, it hits you over the head yeah like it, really fucking hard like this is your life this is what you've given away like yeah it's and, paper it's advertising it's nothing and, like, and you don't really notice that because i remember the first time i saw this movie um I was I was a teenager when I first saw this movie. Yeah, me too. I didn't really get like the, how powerful the messages actually were no, until I was an adult. It's the older you get and the harder you work and yeah. the less anybody gives a shit and yeah. the less money that you make. I work for let me put it this way, man. Uh-huh. I work for a couple of pricks. I'm not gonna say the name of the company. Uh huh. Like, but I work for a couple of assholes. They're they they very much know I don't give a shit about them anymore. Like I'm very fucking pissed off. Yeah. I got fucking busted down on my hours mm-hmm. because they weren't paying me what they told me they were gonna pay, and I asked them why they weren't. You asked paying them me. about it, and they fucking took all my hours from me. But like, see, they can and they, they can have do the that. power to do that. And there's nothing I can fucking yeah. do. Yeah, exactly. There's nothing mm-hmm. I can fucking do about it because yeah. I'm technically an independent contractor. Yeah. Like there's nothing I can fucking do about it. We're a right to work state, man. It's a right to work. Exactly. <laughs> We're a right to work state. Like you can Which, fucking, you have the right to work or you can go be fucking homeless and die. Like, and, like and that's like a double edged sword. Yeah. That's a double edged sword because you can either be a part of a union where you can fight for your rights or. Yeah. Or you, you can fall can, in line. You can. Work, that's the thing. Work. One way or another, you fall in line. Yeah. Like, and that's the thing that that kind of fucking sucks about it, especially when when you have a rebellious mentality like yeah. I do, like where I have to, where I don't know how to keep my mouth shut nine times out of fucking ten. <laughs> like I really fucking don't. Like it, it took everything. Like sincerely, like cause I they I just got more hours. Uh-huh. I'm not even kidding. And before they even gave them to me, they swiped them right from under me. And when I asked why, the guy said, "Well, I like you at 16 hours." Had the fucking nerve to tell me that. Well, because I need, I like you at 16 hours. Like, it's better for me there. Like, fuck you. What about me, you <laughs> stupid asshole? And like, the fact that I didn't fucking like just over the phone, like tell him like, I hope your fucking kid gets cancer. Fuck you. Like, I was angry. <laughs> like, I wanted to say all sorts of really horrible yeah. shit at him. But I didn't. I mm. bit my tongue. I swallowed my pride. Why? Because I need the fucking hours right now. Yeah. Like, I need those. I like, I, I, it's shitty as it is. I need them. So then, so then it begs the question, man. Like, would you... What would you do if you found a box full of sunglasses and you put them on and you see the world is in black and white like that? Sincerely, if 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 it ever came to that where I found out that like it's not my paranoia, Uh like everybody (laughs) is out to fucking like rob you fucking blind, and like those of you who are really good little dogs get a little bit extra, you get Mm -hmm. to wear the nice suits out on Saturday nights. I would fucking slaughter a lot of people. (laughs) I would lose. My fucking cool, like it turned into a Grand Theft Auto video game man. very quickly. I'm sure it would end twice as fast, but like, because <laughs> like, I'm a very big target. <laughs> yeah, no shit. I'm very slow. Like it, it, it's it's. I don't know if you ever heard the story of the. I wish I could remember his fucking name, uh, but this guy had uh, a small business, uh-huh. and they wanted to build uh, a freeway mm-hmm. in front of his business. And the thing was, you wouldn't be able to see his business from there anymore. Yeah. They wanted to put a building in front of it and then put a freeway in front of that. And he was like, well, no, like, fuck you. I've like, this is my family's business. I've had this business my whole life. For years. And like, nah, tough shit. Like government, like they just step in and like, I'm in a domain. I'm in a domain. And the fucking thing was, is like the mayor fucked him over. Like the city officials fucked him over. Like mm. everybody stood to make money 
from mm. him failing. So yeah. they just fuck, fuck him. They ruined his fucking existence. And this guy spent, he even fucking said like, look, dude, I'll fucking build it for you cheaper and out of my fucking way. Like I'll do it. I will fucking do it with my own money. Mm. And no, fuck you. Tough shit. Yeah. They just fucked this guy. So he spent a year in his shop that nobody could fucking see because it was behind all this shit. <laughs> Is that Re- the guy that made the tank? The killdozer. Dude. He reinforced and built a fucking bulldozer that was fucking bulletproof. And he went out and destroyed like everything he could. Like there's fucking stories of him like, you know, he, he ran over people. No, he fucking didn't. Mm. He destroyed buildings. He uh. fucking took the time to find out who owned what building uh-huh. that fucked him and he ruined them. Damn. Like before killing himself, dude. Like that's what the, the shit does. It drives people mad, especially wow. when you fucking stay in your lane and you do what you're told mm. and you fucking, you, they feed you shit and you smile and you take it and you do it over and over again your whole fucking life so they can mm. give you a watch and fucking tell you to fuck off. <laughs> it's the same people that want you to work till you're fucking 70 that won't hire you after you're 50. Yeah. Like it's horse shit. Mm. And like, it's hard enough really realizing that and seeing it in everyday life and hearing one people's opinion and somebody else's opinion. Oh, if you work hard enough, you can get through anything. Yeah. There are some people that got that lucky yeah. that they didn't have their homes where they wanted to build a fucking freeway mm-hmm. and fucking they didn't have their businesses where they wanted to build a freeway and have their livelihood ripped away and stripped of them. Like yeah. no matter how hard they fucking work their whole lives to own a business, the American dream can turn to shit if somebody richer and more powerful has a smaller, bigger, better dream. Yeah. Like, exactly. and it's horseshit. It's complete and utter fucking horseshit. And if there ever came a day where I put on sunglasses and I found out that not only I've been right this whole time, but the people who've been telling me that I was wrong and sort of keeping me in line from snapping mm. were wrong too. Like there's definitive, no fucking two ways about it. Like I would fucking bite people in the neck. I always, I've always <laughs> joked. It's a joke, but it's not really a joke. Like I yeah. tell people like when the apocalypse starts, I call a piece of Greg Abbott. Like I just want a chunk of him. I just want a little chunk. <laughs> you're gonna of him. you're gonna put him in a little in a little thing on your neck. No, I'm gonna cook him and I'm gonna like, I'm gonna try to consume his powers. <laughs> like I just I'm not gonna go yeah. out there. I'm not gonna chase him. I'm just gonna like, hey, if you get yeah. him, like yeah. let me. I just want a piece. Like what do you want? <laughs> I got bottle caps. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah oh my goodness man it, it fucking really feel dude. no for yeah. real like, this movie, like the older i get the more i relate to it and the fucking crazier it makes me like it really yeah. does like well i'm fucking nuts as it is yeah. like i feel and i'm fucking unbelievably opinionated and i don't know when to shut my mouth clearly mm-hmm. i'm doing it right now yeah but like that would make me insane Mm-hmm. Like if I were to put sunglasses on, like I don't think I'd react nearly as fast, but this is, you know, a 90 minute movie. Yeah. I wouldn't react nearly as quick. I would go, I would like point it out as much as I can. But the second that one of those things notices and hits that, I've got one that can see. Yeah. Like I'm biting, that's the one I'm biting in the neck. <laughs> like, <laughs> like that one gets bitten in the neck and like the next one's going to get bitten in the neck and so on and so forth until I get out of there. Like, tastes, tastes like either bad meat or good cheese. <laughs> so... <laughs> So yeah, man, like like you like this this guy who's been on the straight and narrow his entire life, who who has obviously gotten the short end of the stick more than once. Mm-hmm. He's walking down the street and and he he puts on these sunglasses and all of a sudden they show him the real world. Mm-hmm. Okay, and not only is is it in black and white now, mm-hmm. there's no shades of gray. It's just black and white. Yep. But he notices that the people in power. The rich and the powerful, the cops and the the rich mm-hmm. people, are this uh, demonized version of human beings. Right, right. Okay, they look like they they they're humanoid, mm-hmm. and they look like human beings. To the regular but, eye, yeah. but they look like. Uh, when you put the glasses on, they look like their skin has been stripped away. Yeah, almost like they're inside out. Yeah. Which like, I think is what they're supposed to look like. Yeah, they're yeah. To look they're inside out. Yeah, John Carpenter said well, when he was designing the aliens that he wanted it to look like corrupted aliens or corrupted yeah. humans. Yeah. Because, which is good. Yeah. Because that's what he wanted. That's what he wanted to show what they were doing to the to Earth and, yeah. and the human race. Mm-hmm. That they were corrupting us. That they were making us... Uh, uh, Lazy and stupid. Yeah, yeah, so that we can be easily controlled. Right. So he goes into the supermarket and he bumps into this lady, this, this little, this little old lady with a, with a bad fake wig and, and, and wearing a, 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 a coat and he looks over at her 
And and uh, what does he say? He's like, you look like your head fell in the cheese dip back in 1968. <laughs> you see this? You look at her, and she looks fine. But you put these on, formaldehyde face. You, you you're, you're okay. okay. This one, real fucking ugly. <laughs> see, that's what I picture you doing. <laughs> you know, I, I will like, until one of them starts like, alerting people, like, and I'm gonna bite him in the neck. <laughs> like, 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 I, I love that reaction. Like, uh oh. <laughs> Yeah, no shit. Uh oh, bite her. <laughs> Get a bite ahead. <laughs> Get the jugular. Go for the jugular. Go for the jugular. <laughs> oh my goodness, man. And it, it's <laughs> it's funny, man. Because like he's he uh uh he runs out as because he notices that that she's like, you know, like we there's one that can see us. Yeah. And he's like, oh crap, like shit's about to hit the fan. So he turns around and he runs into these cops. And and two of them, two of them, <laughs> and the cop says, "You look as ugly to us as we do to you, or something like yeah. that." Yeah, you like, know, I doubt which, that. <laughs> which says a lot, man. Yeah, it really does. <laughs> you know, like, like, I, I, it's that that fucking Mario Brothers joke. You know, yeah. monkey, <laughs> we're monkeys. <laughs> so so this guy, like, okay, I don't know how these guys. Okay, I don't know what kind of a fighter this guy is in the movie. Like, is he a former fighter? Is he an actual wrestler? No, I think is he's. He like I a, think he's just. A a, he just throws haymakers, man. Because man, he takes out these cops easy. Yeah, like just they knocks go. Them out. They go down like like Buster Douglas on on Mike Tyson, dude. Like <laughs> straight up, dude. He even says like you fought you bastards die like we do. <laughs> yeah, like and. and he, he blows them away, man. Like, like he, yeah. he knocks them out and he blows them away and he, he basically arms himself. Yeah. And now <laughs> the little thing just flies over his head and who might you be little fella? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. He sees that, which is a, a stop motion animation kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, but it's like, it, but it's what we would call now a drone, a drone. Yeah. It's a fucking drone. Like, yeah. And uh, another, another, uh, 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 prediction from John Carpenter. Yeah. Man. <laughs> like not only did he predict the freaking, you know, I was talking on, on the, on the, on the watches, but he predicted drones, like, yeah. dr- like drones looking around searching for anything for, for people, man. Yeah. And, uh, as, as he, he goes and he ends up in a, uh, uh, in a bank mm-hmm. and here we have the most famous line ever uttered i'm sorry in any john carpenter movie ever. absolutely okay I agree. and where he got this line was <laughs> back when he was wrestling he carried around a book of one-liners yeah okay yeah, yeah. like one of those 99 cent a book of one-liners that you yeah. get from the dollar store or one of the one of the the corner stores yeah right <laughs> and he says i have come to chew bubble gum and kick ass and I'm all out of bubble gum. And I'm all out of bubble gum. <laughs> what a seriously one of the best lines in movie history, dude. So like, it really is. He said that because he was waiting because he he had our because the, the cameras had already started rolling on that yeah. take. And John Carpenter hadn't yelled uh, action yet. Yeah. So he just said it. Like he just straight up said it. Mm-hmm. And John Carpenter never said action. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, fuck it, keep it. It's great. Yeah. It's a great line. <laughs> he did. He, it was so great that he did it five more times just to make sure that you got that it right. right. Yeah, man. And it, it's it's good. That's an old wrestling, like old. That's like an yeah. old school wrestler thing. Like, like a lot of those guys used to read that book, like uh, mm. how to make money and influence people. Really? Like they legitimately would read that shit. Like a lot of those guys, like took their their wrestling persona really seriously. Like he yeah. had all those because he didn't like to use the same one liner twice. Like if you ever watch yep. old Roddy Piper promos, he really never said the same thing twice. Like he was one of the best, man. He, he was, was amazing. That's one that. Of the best. That's that old line. Just when they think they know the answers, I change the question. <laughs> like I love yeah. that. Like that was yep. that was Roddy Piper shit. Exactly. And like he would just like do. I think he would because once you were in that mentality of that old school wrestler, like you would take that everywhere. Yeah. yeah. Like he wasn't Roddy Piper just in the ring. Mm-hmm. Like if he was at the grocery store, he was Roddy Piper. If a yeah. kid came up to him and asked him for an autograph, he'd tell him to get bet and get out of his face. <laughs> which, like, which, which is why it's, it's so shocking how good of a job he does in this movie as because it's so different than his wrestling persona, Very. man. It's, it's so far like, away so from, from the evil, like hot rod, Roddy. Piper. Yeah. Like, like hot rod, Roddy Piper was a, uh, a flamboyant, 
evil. He'll take candy from a baby and would legitimately and take candy from yeah. a baby. Like, like he would go, he would go to uh to women's hair salons and ruffle their hair. Like after yeah. they get there, like he was that kind of guy. Yeah, like, he, was he was that just, kind of dickhead. Yeah, like he would spit in your coffee. Kind like, of. Guy. I, I remember one of my favorite ones when he was doing uh. Uh, promos like out on the street. Yeah. Like he was doing some sort of like Roddy Piper thing, like out on the street, and some dude walked by him. Yeah. And he was drinking a coffee. He's like, nice coffee. What is that? Five dollars? Get out of here. He just <laughs> knocks it out of his hand. Like five dollars in nineteen eighties money is a lot of money. It's a lot of fucking money. And it's it's super funny because like you get guys you have everybody want every bad guy in pro wrestling has always wanted to be Roddy Piper. Yeah. Like that's, that's the true. bad guy you want to be. If you yeah. don't believe me, take a look at MJF. Like out in a, in a W look right at the now. Miz, dude, the Miz, dude, yeah, exactly. Dude. dude, there's footage of MJF. Like what, one of the things that I like that he does that if you go up to him uh-huh. and you try to get a selfie or an autograph uh-huh. and you're wearing a hat, he will legitimately take your hat and throw it. <laughs> <laughs> like there's, there's a bunch of videos of him just like, shut up. Yeah. And he won't sign or take a damn picture. He just grabs it off your head, throws it, and walks away. And now he's got a bodyguard with him who like pushes you around if you try to touch him. Yeah. And if it's not like bad enough that MJF's built like a goddamn tank, <laughs> like, he's got a giant guy with him too. And like, yeah. you can't be that bad guy anymore. No, and, no and, you can't. And it's so funny to watch a guy like that portray this like hero of the people, this, yeah. this Joe Everyman, really. This this guy who was never, who never... Uh, he 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 was thrust into it. Like he was yeah. thrust into the into the hero role in yeah. the story. Like he put the sunglasses he, on and now he's got a responsibility. Yeah, like he's he and and that and that's another point of his of his heroics is that he didn't have to go forward through it. Like he didn't right. have to have to uh uh go through with it. He could have just taken the glasses like this is too weird and 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 you know left. But he was he had enough um uh, peace of mind to to actually notice that something was wrong and that he had to do something about it. So he um, he goes. He makes his way back to the uh, to the alley. To uh, oh no, he he actually meets up with uh, uh, with Meg Foster. Well, actually, he, he does run through the alley first, and that's where he comes across uh, uh, an actual cop. Oh yeah, like it's true. it's yeah, an yeah. actual police officer. That's right. Him, that's right. Like, that's right. That's he right. He tells him like piss off, where he yeah. kills him and shit, and like I, I it's. It's fucked up because they've integrated like with us. Yeah, like, that's, that's the yeah. freaky part. Like, it's not that like, cops aren't like the the fucking villains. They integrated into yeah. the police. Like they've yeah. taken over. They've taken over into everything. Like that's the whole point. But there's still yeah good people left, which I think that's, it was. A, it's a really vital moment in the movie, and it's such a small like like part, mm-hmm. but it is very vital to it. Where like fuck, like they they, they we don't they don't know. Like nobody knows. Yeah. Like you don't know if you're working with them for them, like, mm-hmm. and it's so weird because like it's the same thing. Like, I see the same thing about a lot of cops. Like, you know, like the some like the policy enforcers are the ones that fucking piss me off and annoy me. Yeah, like people can show me videos of like, oh, this cop was like he played drums with these kids. <laughs> This one jumped rope with some kids. I'm like, right. But what about the ones that like shoot people with their hands in the air? Like yeah. what about the ones that plant drugs in people's like cars? Yeah. Like on routine traffic stops. Yeah. Like it, it's, it's really fucked up. Like there's really shitty, shitty fucking piece of garbage cops out there. Yeah. And like, I like the idea that they would be just these fucking dickheads <laughs> these from another world. <laughs> like yeah. it, it dehumanizes them. And like, in my opinion, it, like we should, we humanize them. Way too much, like so much so that they forgive them for everybody else, mm-hmm. and it's like, well, nobody asked you to fucking forgive them. Like we asked you to put them in jail. They killed people. Yeah. Like the fact that there there were cops that fucking they didn't go to jail for for gang raping a girl. Like mm-hmm. cops that fucking don't go to jail for murdering kids in the park. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like there was this one story that I heard about this guy who responded to a call. Uh, this guy was was threatening to kill himself. He had he had a knife. And he was threatening to kill himself. This cop knew this kid. This mm-hmm. this guy was 19 years old. He was a paranoid schizophrenic. Yeah. He was off his meds. Yeah. So he knew. He knew this kid. And he showed up to the scene and he's like um, uh, trying to talk the kid down. Mm-hmm. Okay. The backup showed up. As soon as the backup showed up, they shot and killed the kid. Yeah. As soon as the backup showed up. Mm-hmm. The next day. They, they took that cop in, the cop who didn't shoot the kid, mm-hmm. and fired him. They fired the one that didn't shoot. They fired yeah. him because they said that he endangered the lives of the other officers. Yeah. Okay. Which is a bunch of fucking horse shit. So, How in danger are you? You have a fucking gun on your holster. So like, shut the fuck up. That message is not all, not like not all the cops were bad. 
Right. Not all the people in power were bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's, it's, it's some of them. Yes. But the, the more important thing is I think what you, what you said, they have integrated into our lives, into our, into our, uh, 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 socioeconomic, uh, uh, society, society, right. Yeah. And, and it, it, it makes it, it makes it even more, more tragic with what happens towards the end of the movie. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So he runs into a uh, uh, into a garage where he meets up Meg Foster. Mm-hmm. And let me tell you a little story about Meg Foster, man. Yeah. <laughs> tell me. I had I had at the same time. No, in 1987, this movie came out in '88, and in 1987, she came out in a movie called Masters of the Universe. Ah, yes. Okay, she played Evil In. Okay? Yeah, I remember. I remember the first time I saw that movie. I was infatuated with her eyes. Oh God, she I has such beautiful she eyes. Had she had the really most does. gorgeous freaking eyes. But then I knew, even back then, I knew. Oh, they're they're probably contacts mm-hmm. because uh, I, I I some somebody else. I think it was like Teen Wolf that that he also had contacts. Yeah, in, yeah. In, in his eyes when he was transforming, or whatever. So I was like, oh, those are contacts. But man, they look awesome. Mm. And then I see her in this movie. Yeah, and she's got the exact same. Yeah, eyes. Gray blue eyes, mm-hmm. like those are her real, her real. That's eyes, a real man. eye color, yeah. And and man, like ever, like I, I've I've had a soft spot for her, even though I've only seen her in a couple of other movies. Yeah, I was gonna say, I was like, I don't really remember like her much else. She, uh, she, she, I guess she was prolific in the eighties. She did a lot of uh, TV. She, I think she was in like Knots Landing or whatever, like oh, those okay. those the uh, the uh, evening soap operas. That yeah, were on ABC, made for CBS. TV movies and stuff. Yeah, yeah, though that stuff, those Lifetime movies, I guess. Right on. She <laughs> could have uh, played Beverly in nineteen nineties. It. <laughs> I guess opposite Mr. Tim Curry. <laughs> yeah. <What? laughs> so he he basically kidnaps her. No, he doesn't basically kidnap her. Yeah, he kidnaps he, her. He kidnaps her. He full on like Schwarzenegger raid on Chongs her. Yeah, <laughs> and and they go to uh, they go to her apartment, which which okay. So one day, one time, uh, when, I think this was like back in 1990. It's a house on stilts. It's a house on stilts, right? Like, yeah. like that's that. Those are the kind of houses that they have over there in LA. Yeah, man. which I don't understand. So but okay. yeah, like like you get an earthquake. Like, doesn't the ground shake? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Hey, you know so, what I do? I just won't be on the ground. Yeah. Well, that'll show me, I guess. So, so th- this is what I like to call '80s chic or whatever. Like oh, '80s, yeah. like like it, it's like the '80s uh, guppy uh, threw up all over all over the. Yeah, the, the thing. I have expected the guy from Lethal Weapon two to come out and go diplomatic immunity. <laughs> like, yeah, it's just been revoked. <laughs> <laughs> it's just been revoked, little fella. <laughs> Or was he from so, Detroit by way of Canada? <laughs> <laughs> eh? So, <laughs> so, so, like he's he's there trying to convince her, trying to get her to 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 put on the, put on the damn glasses. <laughs> like I love how like everybody's like, why? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Everybody in the whole fucking movie. Hey, like, to try these on. Why? Like, <laughs> like well, they're they're not gonna squirt me in the eye, right? Eh? <laughs> like everybody's afraid they're fucking saw traps and shit. Like they're gonna put them on, and Roddy Piper's voice is gonna come on. Like I want to play a game. <laughs> Would you like to play a game? Oh, it's gonna be a good one. <laughs> No, I, I laugh. I laugh because like the rest of the movie, he's just trying to get he's people to put. Get people to, he's got a box of them, and he couldn't give them away. Like, I know. That's how bad these. I'm not wearing those things. They're not even name brand. <laughs> That's why it should have. They should have been the fucking Dustin Hoffman ones from Tootsie. Like, just so there was a reason. Like, I'm not gonna put those on. Like, <laughs> I love how fucking everybody's just like, no. Well, even she says like, I'll put them on. Yeah. But when I don't see what you want me to see, like, yeah. <laughs> you right. stupid asshole. I don't know, man. What would you do if, if some guy freaking kidnapped you, forced you to take him to your house and say, put these sunglasses on? Is he wearing, does he got the two guns? Yes. Yeah, put the fucking sunglasses on. <laughs> If we've made it that far, if I haven't snapped on the drive over there and just attempted to like run into a telephone pole, because yeah. just so everyone's aware, <laughs> that's exactly the last thing you want to do is jump in a fucking car with me and pull a gun on me. Yeah. I will gun it to eighty. <laughs> like, it's yeah. one of those like, oh no 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 no, you picked yeah. the wrong car. None of us are going home today. <laughs> like I hope it was worth trying to rob me of the thirteen bucks I got in cash on me. Fuck yeah. that. But, but if no, you know, you ca- you catch me outside, like, well, fuck, you know, all you're asking yeah. me to do is put sunglasses on, like, I'm pissed, but I'll do it. 88 Crown Victoria, taxi cab, no airbag. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Airbags, so, gotta love them. Yeah. So he's like, he's like, uh, um, trying to convince her to, to put on the sunglasses. And I, I, I forgot, I forgot what he does, but he makes his way to the, to the to window. The, to the window 
She bashes him over the head with a bottle and he just flies, flies out through the, the window. fucking thing. <laughs> right? I was like, holy shit. And the way he fell down the hill, it reminded me of that scene in a, in a black sheep. Dude, where I said the <laughs> same thing today, dude. Like, I said, I shit you not. I'm watching it when he like rolls over. Like, the first thing I did was go, the hell was that about? Like, <laughs> I was like, do you ri- stay I- strong roots? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm like, I might run back up there and shoot the bitch in the face. Like, I I'm a little pissed off about that. He's like, well, that came out of nowhere. Yeah, I was like, that was like, geez, up. man, how much does he weigh? 6,000 pounds <laughs> for him to break right through that window? <laughs> he went down like the goddamn boulder in Indiana Jones. Jeez, just man. going, dude. <laughs> like, how much did they pay that stunt, man? I want to know, dude. That guy I, did an it, amazing it wasn't job. Enough. It fucking wasn't enough to <laughs> take that far. I wouldn't be surprised if that was Roddy Piper and his crazy ass. It might have that been. was at the height of his cocaine usage too, man. Yeah. Wasn't it? Like yes. he, he was he was on every drug known to man back then, dude. So, so go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go for it. Go ahead. So he uh um he, he I guess he goes from there, he's like, well, gotta gotta keep moving or whatever. I gotta and, find somebody to put these fucking sunglasses <laughs> on. Right. Well, first I gotta get more of them. So oh, that's right. He goes back to the, the alley. He goes back to the alley and he finds, okay. So I think this whole scene was just meant to pad out the runtime. Because yeah, but God, what a pad. <laughs> because this is my fucking, you have no idea how much I adore this scene. Will because he goes back. No, check this out. He goes back and the trash cans are empty, right? Yeah. Well, actually, no, he goes to, to Keith David first. He yeah, that's right, first. that's right. And he's like, how and many he, people would you kill? Because yeah. apparently some days have passed. Yeah, some days have passed and Keith David's like, what the fuck are you doing here? And he's like, I need you to put these sunglasses on. And Keith David's <laughs> like, I ain't putting any fucking sunglasses on. Get the fuck out of here, you crazy asshole. Like, just like, you'd be like, I got a wife and kids. Yeah, I got a wife and kids. Like, be lucky I'm not fucking screaming for the police. Like, get out of here. So he just fucking takes off. That's when he goes back to the alley and he finds that the... He, where he hid the sunglasses have been picked up by the trash yeah. by the dump. Yeah. And he jumps into the fucking, like, where he opens the back of the, of the fucking. Without them noticing. Without them noticing. I'm like, yeah. there's not a little light that goes on in the truck that, that right. hurts you, that the doors open. Like, <laughs> I can't leave my trunk open. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, even in 1988, you couldn't leave the trunk open without yeah. a ding. The little ding. ding. Yeah. And like, nothing? Like, all right. So he opens it. Now he, you get a notification on your app. Right. <laughs> and he, he finds the sunglasses in the in the back of the dump truck. Mm. And the dump truck just like stands itself up and dumps yeah. everything out. Which yeah. was, it was funny, unnecessary, but funny. And it, it, it's still open so you can see all the way inside. Like there's no mechanism for it to crush the trash. Yeah. Like, like nothing. That. I was like, okay, weird, whatever. Right. And then. Uh, do you, boo. That's when he like, he picks up the, the box and as he's walking, Keith David's coming down the alley. Yeah. And he's like, hey. Like one week's pay. One week's pay. The best I could do. And he threw yeah. the money, he throws the money at him and he's like, take care. And he's like, Frank, you got to put these sunglasses <laughs> on. And like, man, get the hell away from me. I ain't putting nothing on. And like, <laughs> he grabs him and fucking Keith David just punches him. Yeah. Like just socks him right in the gut. Yeah. And fucking, that's when, that's when Roddy Piper delivers that line. Like you either put these sunglasses on or start eating that trash can. And fucking Keith David's like, fuck you. And just walks <laughs> away from him. And fucking Roddy Piper throws this haymaker and decks him in the fucking face. Like, I'm watching this with my wife and I'm telling her and I'm like, dude, one of them would be like heavily concussed and seizing and yeah. the other one would be dead. Yeah. You hit somebody that many times in the face yeah. that fucking hard, like the wind back yeah. on both of those guys. Like, it was one of those, like, not only am I going to punch you, I'm totally telegraphing which arm it's going to be. Yeah. It's this one way back here. <laughs> yeah. Don't fucking move. It takes all day to get there, and too. And fucking, <laughs> they just keep, like, decking each other in the fucking face, dude. So, like, so check this out. Roddy Piper is a wrestler, like a straight-up wrestler, right? Uh, it's the, uh, Keith David used to be a boxer. Yeah. So these two guys are he was an amateur They're boxer. Huge. These two guys are fighters. Mm-hmm. Okay. They had originally choreographed this fight to be like 30 seconds long. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and that's all the they practiced that for I don't know how many weeks in the back in the John Carpenter's backyard. Mm-hmm. Okay. And on the day <laughs> They just kept going. So they good, just kept dude. going. You okay, dirty motherfucker. <laughs> John Carpenter never yelled "cut." So okay, they just kept beating the shit out of each other. 
each other. Not just punches, but hits to the gut. So Freaking the Keith David gets on top yeah, of yeah, Roddy Piper and knees him in the groin like a thousand times. You can dude. fucking see how bad it hurts him because Roddy Piper covers up, like yeah. legitimately, like grabs a handful of himself. Yeah. To like just reduce the pain, the impact of the hit, and 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 I'm not and I'm not lying when I say this, man. They actually hit themselves a couple of times yeah, while they, they were filming each other a few it. Times, yeah. But these guys, these two guys were like such men, and like we don't need no cream in our coffee. Yeah, I mean, they no just shit. they just kept going back and, and doing it again, man. Had a bowl of nails for breakfast <laughs> without any milk. <laughs> Like there were some salty spittoon sons of bitches, dude. Like, and straight I, up, man. I, it was so funny. I'm watching that scene, and I, I tell my wife because she had mentioned gargoyles, and I'm like, yeah. "Oh yeah, that's Goliath." Yeah. And she's like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, Keith David's the voice of Goliath and and gargoyles." And she's like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Like, yeah. just like blew her mind. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Like, listen to Goliath fight fucking Roddy Piper right now. I'm yeah, like, man. I, I I wish I wish they could bring him back for the new Spawn movie, dude. God, I wish I'd they could bring his, him back. I love his voice for it again, man. But like, uh, his voice yeah, is so good. Jamie Foxx will do a good job, I, I think. Yeah, I'm, I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm gonna walk away from that. Yeah, yeah, they, 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 Idris Elba is a thing, but what the fuck ever. <laughs> Whatever. So <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm fucking bitter about that. You know, I will get yeah. into that some other time. But I'm yeah. fucking really bitter. about I, I like Jamie Foxx. I really fucking do. Yeah. No. He's a great singer. He's a great comedian. He 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 he's can a act. Actor. Yeah, he's, he can act, but his voice no matter. No. If if so, if they really wanted to fucking use him, they should have cast him as Chapel. That would have been cool. That would have been fucking yeah. dope. Like just yeah. fucking silent, quick, efficient, like yeah. a fucking wet. He's got the serial look, killer. He's got the look. Man. He'd have been fucking awesome as Chapel. Yeah. But no. But no. Make him spawn. Fine. You <laughs> anyway, know what? whatever. Moving on. We're not even talking about that. Fuck. <laughs> Moving on. God. Todd got, McFarlane, got, we, I have a message. We got you in all kinds of fire today, bro. I know. Right? Maybe I'm just fucking mad. Dude. Like, maybe it's just a bad week for me, dude. Like, oh who knows? God, dude. You need, I, a, you need a bowl of cereal or something, dude? Like, yeah, with the egg and no milk. No milk. Like, I'm getting, so, dude, I went to eat at Wings and Rings today. I should be calm. You should be this. in a great mood, dude. I should be in a great mood. Oh, my goodness. Like, I don't know, man. I, I, so, I think I'm just... No, no, no. The whole, the whole, the whole combination of... You know the the economy collapsing and spawn. I'm just mad. <laughs> spawn was was a was a straw. Spawn was the, the spawn was a straw, man. <laughs> That's the line. That's the line. <laughs> anyway, so so uh, uh, Roddy Piper gets the upper hand, and he basically it's so <laughs> funny, man, because he he beats David Keith unconscious, and he picks up his unconscious body and puts the sunglasses on, and for a second it's Lock. like it's like he's holding up a black Bernie. <laughs> <laughs> from from weekend at Bernie's, weekend at Bernie's. <laughs> yes. like why yeah. haven't we reviewed that? We should do that one in part two, dude. Right? Like, just play like just bongo music and shit, and watch Keith <laughs> David just like, dance around. The fact that they made a sequel to that man, like, whoever <laughs> decided that should really burn in hell. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Like, no man. That. On that note, real quick, man, let's go ahead and take a break so we can get our get our nuts and bolts back together, man. <laughs> We're gonna take a break. We'll be right back here on RGV Titan Radio. Uh, we are the nine five six. We'll be back. The views and opinions expressed by our guest, host, and or DJs do not. We repeat, do not reflect the official policy or position of RGV Titan Radio, our affiliates, or our sponsors. RGVTitanRadio.com. We are the nine five six. Welcome back to uh, the Movie Know It All podcast here on RGV Titan Radio. Let me tell we you something else <laughs> about Spawn, Will. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> Why did they take strawberry Twinkies off the market? Tell John me. Leguizamo. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, God. Geez, Moving man. on. That's I a- Okay. Let, let me just say something real quick about John Leguizamo. <laughs> I cannot find Freaked on DVD. I really? cannot find Freaked on DVD. I freaking love that show. You know what's so anyway, funny is because somebody you mentioned Freaked is because somebody yeah. put up uh, this meme that I, I legitimately put it up a year ago, uh, and I guess like somebody reposted it a year ago, and they just posted yeah. it today again. And uh, it's a picture of Robert Smith of the Cure, and uh-huh. he's talking about how he just one day punched Morrissey in the arm, and Morrissey started crying. And yeah. anybody who knows me knows that I fucking like Morrissey as much as I like Crotch Rot. <laughs> and like, I, I literally... And you really love Crotch Rot. <laughs> I, I reposted the picture and I captioned it because you're a pussy and your mama's a puta bitch. <laughs> 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 Legi- I swear to God, I posted that just today. Like, I, I was that. like, God damn, I want to watch that. Like, How come you don't stop drinking? Because <laughs> I'm not a quitter. quitter. <laughs> anyway. 
<laughs> see, see, we're we're, uh, we're 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 padding out this show just like John Carpenter pads out his movie, man. With yeah, a but, freaking ten minute fight scene. Yeah, but me and Will aren't gonna fight. I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to get kneed in the nuts and call yeah, me dirty I, motherfucker. I'm, I'm a lover, not a fighter. I don't like good at either. So <laughs> we, uh, um, <laughs> that was a good job. <laughs> They they uh they they finally they finally he finally gets the sunglasses on man and he yeah. sees everything what's going on and they uh do they go back to the church right they go back to the church yeah or they go they go, they go they, somewhere no they, they go to a hotel they go to a hotel yeah. and they meet up with uh, with what's his name um the resistance leader yeah okay yeah. I forget the cat's name but yeah but he uh he was he, in Escape from L A too he was in Escape from L A and he was also in Mortal Kombat. Which, which is where I know him from. Yeah. He was uh, Master Boyd. Oh, that's right. He was that's right. He's Master yeah. Boyd and he's this, Lyndon Ashby. This, this yeah. guy is very much a, a TV and stage actor. Not, nothing against, you know, his acting, but he's very much a stage actor. You could tell. I legitimately he, just referred to Lyndon Ashby because I couldn't remember the word <laughs> Johnny Cage. <laughs> Jesus, man. My brain is on malfunction wow. today. Oh, if you want malfunction, wait till we do Mortal Kombat, bro. Oh, God. So, so he's there. And invites them to to the uh, the resistance party, the the next resistance meeting that they're having. Yeah, yeah. And and freaking Meg Foster's character shows up. I think her name is Helen, mm-hmm. uh, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, yeah. but then she shows up. Okay, and as soon as she shows up, <laughs> and as as soon as she's like. I'm sorry, blah, 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 whatever. And then, like, they attack. The wall just blows up the right wall next to her. blows up. <laughs> like, holy shit. And everybody dies, dude. Like, they kill everybody, yeah. man. They're just wiping people out. Man. Like, they, they, uh, a lot of the, a lot of the characters, the, the, the homeless people from the, from the Shantytown mm-hmm. were there and they all get gunned down, including the, uh, the, the father, daughter. And that's and where, where that's where you find out that the, the one who, um, who betrayed him was what's his name? I don't remember his name in the movie, but the actor's name is George Flowers. Yeah, he's yeah, called yeah. Buck. Buck. Yeah, he's in a bunch of Carpenter movies. Yeah. He was one of when he was in one of my favorite roles in uh, Wishmaster. Uh huh. He's the homeless guy outside uh-huh. getting yelled at by Reggie Bannister. <laughs> oh really? And it cracks me up because like just the horrific shit he says to <laughs> to fuck it. And that like legitimately that's kind of where I got like because like I said a really shitty thing earlier when I was like fuck you I hope your fucking kids get cancer yeah. like I was mad about like my yeah. boss. That's from fucking Wishmaster. Oh, is it? Because he tells him, like, hey, you should only get cancer. You should only get cancer and die. <laughs> like, I was like, I mean, if it worked that way, that'd be fucked up. Yeah. But like, good, like trust, and if I had a wish, trust me, it wouldn't be to give anybody fucking cancer. <laughs> it's not a very pleasant experience. No. <laughs> he, like, also, uh, he also came out in... Uh, um, in uh, uh, the Back to the Future movies, yeah, he was yeah, red. Yeah, yeah. yeah, which which it's funny because it, this is kind of a debated topic on whether or not the homeless guy uh, uh, from Part One and Part Two was the same guy that was the mayor in 1955. Oh yeah 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 yeah. Because yeah. his name was Red Red uh, Red Thomas or something like that. Yeah yeah. And then when when Marty McFly goes back, he calls him Red. Yeah. So everybody's saying like, oh, that is the he's same a guy. Former mayor. Yeah. But anyway, that that's that's where I know him from. We could sit here and fucking discuss Back to the Future theories. Yeah, all goddamn day. <laughs> so he's uh, uh, they they escape, and they're 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 running down an alley, and they 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 had a a, a watch. They have one of the watches. <clears throat> yeah. One of the watches, which is which is so funny because it, it was like one of those gold Rolex watches, and it, and it looks like a friggin' one of the iPhones on the inside of yeah, it. Yeah, like, like, <laughs> it's weird. I'm like, oh like, wow, like so, like it's like <laughs> message. Yeah. You know, like, 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 I think like, they were warning us. Like they're they they rip the message's leg off and just beating you over the head. You with see why this makes me so angry? <laughs> so they uh um they open up a uh, I guess it's like a hole in in the ground and they jump well, no, in. It's um it's an emergency tell it's an emergency um wormhole. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like if they get in trouble, it opens up and uh-huh. they have five seconds to jump through before the the wormhole eliminates Close, itself. Yeah, yeah. And like this, they it pops they, in his they hand. accidentally they accidentally yeah uh, it goes off in his hand and yeah. it just opens a hole behind them and fucking mm-hmm. Roddy Piper's like jump and like the I'm thing's like down five or like, <laughs> he's like I'm not jumping down there I don't know what's down there just jump at it <laughs> fucking bullets coming the other way like I jump I want to jump like right. I don't know about you I'm jumping in the hole <laughs> so so they they end up in a uh, uh, like an underground tunnel system or whatever yeah and uh, like this is the only this is the only part that I'm like 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 really because they 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 show up at the uh, it's it's like this big ballroom 
Yeah. But like they're having like this this uh this dinner. It's a secret society meeting. Yeah. It's a it's a fucking what do you call it? But, uh, Lum- Illuminati ball. Well, yeah, man. but like would you really have it in an underground when you have the world taken over? Like would you really have it in an underground oh, bunker? You're discussing legitimate business. <laughs> You're discussing real alien biz. I imagine that's where they have their underground sex club, like in friggin' uh, Eyes Wide, Eyes Wide shut. shut. You know what, though? Like, if, if mm. you're going to be in the Illuminati and have an underground sex club and not call it the Illuminati, it's a fucking waste of time. <laughs> Would Rocket get on that, guys? <laughs> I think you'll be here all week. Hey. So, <laughs> Illuminati will. <laughs> Emphasis I, on the naughty will, and another thing about Spawn. I, I, <laughs> I'd call it Illuminati. Oh, <laughs> you ruined it with your pornographic mind. You, you're sick, man. You're sick. That's not right. <laughs> so that's where they meet up with Red, man. That's yeah. where they meet, meet up with that guy, and that guy's like, "Oh, you're here. Therefore, you must be on our side." Yeah, and I was like, <laughs> "You fuck." That's where you're like, "You fucking yeah. dick." Yeah, like you're the one who sold everybody out. You yeah. fucking dick. And it's and it, and it's it's like uh, he uh, um, he then proceeds to tell him the entire plan, like like everything was yeah. going on, and apparently he has access to where you know, everybody every, just has access to shit. Like, yeah, like okay. and they're like covered in blood with guns in their hands. Can you show us around? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like, think Jedi mind tricked his like, ass, dude. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, you know, like Red, you were fucking like homeless and dirty not yeah. five minutes ago. Like this doesn't, this doesn't like none of the alarms are going off. Like, I, guess, I guess we know the kind of mind he has that made him homeless and dirty because if he's showing these guys around, no like, shit, for real, dude. dude. Like, the Illuminati are fucking dumbasses, <laughs> <laughs> dude. And they have like the the how did they take over the world with security like this? <laughs> like seriously. It probably hired from the same fucking company I work for. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, like they like, oh, they they you're you're there with your PKE meter and they tell you that the resistance is dead and you immediately leave your post. Like, so, like we got all of them. Like yeah. we know it was just two. Yeah. Fucking morons. <laughs> so you guys so, are dumb. They're gonna be looking for military <laughs> dressed as a clown. <laughs> I'm not a clown, I'm it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the crow. <laughs> <laughs> the crow. Okay, nobody can dress up as a crow except for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking forgot. About <laughs> Which I forgot to mention, dude. Oh my South God. Park did an amazing parody of this of this fight scene. Did you, did you see yes, that? Yes, dude, with Timmy and Jimmy. <laughs> Bro, like, just to hear what. Put you, the you, hat on. You, you dirty motherfucker. <laughs> Not this year. <laughs> I just watching that, and I'm I I I'll never forget watching that episode. Literally for the first time, going holy fucking shit! They're going like they're time. really going here, dude. Like, which would be a fucking thing I seem to say every year when I watch that fucking show. <laughs> right. Like, holy shit, they're really going there. It has its like, hits and misses, man. But man, when it hits, it hits, dude. It like, doesn't stop hitting when it hits. It hits like the fucking yeah. fight scene from They Live. <laughs> yeah. Like holy shit, dude. Like. Uh, animals and and it's funny man because like i didn't see this movie like i said until i was a teenager and apparently this movie has that big of an and and i don't hear it in the same the same like uh like uh uh places that you hear like escape from new york and yeah and and the thing i think this movie is just as good as that one yeah uh, all those it's it's like in my like and it's hard because Outside of Kubrick, Carpenter's my favorite director. Uh-huh. Like, but it's mainly because I have forever envied Carpenter's career. Yeah. Like, if I could, if I could have the career mirrored of one director, it would be yeah. him. Really? Because he gets to write and direct. He's and the produce. ultimate do-it-all. Like, yeah, he does it all. Yeah, and and he, like, the, if the movie fails, it's no one to blame but him. Yeah. And his movies rarely ever failed. Like Only even, his last couple of movies have failed. Yeah. But, but like, really, even, did they fail? Because, I, well, I don't know about Ghost of Mars, man. I wasn't really a big fan of that one. I fucking love Ghost of Mars. Yeah. Like, Ghost of Mars delivered exactly everything it promised. Yeah. Like, just garbage. Uh-huh. And I'm fine with it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> it's a garbage movie. But uh-huh. like, Carpenter produced a lot of garbage movies. He made yeah. a lot of garbage movies. And he made a lot of like, popcorn esque films, but he also made stuff that was really thought provoking yeah. and fucking scary and based off of really interesting stories. Mm-hmm. Like the things based off of a book called Who Goes There, which is yeah. fucking really, really good. It's a really good Which short is a story. remake of a film that was made back in the forties, I yeah, believe. Yeah, the thing from outer space. The thing from outer space. Yeah. And like to to go and do stuff like that, like 
like fuck Halloween. You know mm. what I mean? Like when we talk about Carpenter and sometimes we forget like the, mm. the, the one that started it all was Halloween. Yeah. And like for him to follow that with, with fucking, I think the thing movie he followed was, was the was thing. The thing, yeah. Which mm. is like, holy shit. And the only reason the thing didn't do as financially as well is because it opened against aliens. Yeah. Like, yeah. and you were only going to see one alien movie this weekend. Like, which one are you going to see? The one yeah. that, I, the sequel to the one I already saw. Yeah. Like people exactly. didn't know how fucked up and good the thing was because they, yeah. they missed it yeah. because they saw, they went to go see a, a really great movie. Yeah. And that seems to be like, I've, I've, like I said, I've always admired what Carpenter can do when mm-hmm. left to his own devices, because mm-hmm. it's proof that what a director can do mm-hmm. when you fucking leave them alone and let them make a fucking movie. Mm-hmm. Like you do stuff like what Carpenter does. And then you have his movies where you can sit here and argue like fucking, I, I know people who will sit and tell me that um, In the Mouth of Madness is a shit movie. I yeah. fucking love In the Mouth of Madness. That was a great movie. Like, it's out there. It's fucking weird. Yeah. He tackled on some shit that he's never tried before, but that's what I loved about it. Like, he tries shit that he never tried before. Yeah. And it's fucking really, really good. Mm-hmm. And you get to go to those places with him and this and not feel the fucking fingers of studios going, don't do that, don't do that, don't do yeah. that, don't do that. And I, cause I, I fucking hate that. Like it's one of the things that drives me mad. So I, I've always envied the, the dude's career. Yeah. Like it's a really fucking good one. Yeah. And his, his, with a career as diverse as his man, like, like you said, he went from Halloween mm-hmm. to the thing yeah. to big trouble in little China. No, it was uh, escape from New York. Escape which, from New yeah, York. Escape okay. From New York was like 84. Okay. What do those movies have in common other than Kurt Russell? Like nothing. nothing. None. Yeah. Those movies have nothing in common. Nothing. Right. No, so just the director. Yeah. And then you get to this movie, uh, where, where it's filled to the brim of hit you over the face commentary. Yeah. The the the, the thing was very subliminal. The commentary yeah. was very subliminal. I don't know what the com if if there was any commentary or you can consider commentary with Escape from New York. Or oh, absolutely, like man. Like the first yeah. one anyway, because like Escape from LA is is. The Gremlins 2 to the Gremlins. I love Escape from LA, man. I do too. I, I, I saw Escape it. from LA before I saw Escape from New York. Really? Right? Yes, I did. That is wild. And I no. am not I am not ashamed to, to admit that. I am and not it's it's really that. nothing to be ashamed <laughs> of. I don't think because I can remember in like I think it was ninety seven when that one came out. I was already a huge fan of Escape from New York. Yeah. And I, I remember I can't even remember what movie I rented that uh the beginning of the trailer has like that green, like almost like flat line beeping thing. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, ow, that was my fucking shoulder. I don't know if you caught that <laughs> on the mic, but that was my shoulder. But, um, yeah. And they're, they're like talking about how like, this is the United States of America. And I think it was, yeah. it takes place in the futuristic world of 2014. Oh no, no. The movie came out in 97. This one, it, it part two escape from LA takes yeah. place in 2014. Oh, okay. Part one takes place okay. in 97 okay. and it came out in 84. Yeah. But like, it's like no, like no red meat, no smoking, yeah. like no this. It's almost very much like because they did it again it, with it, the it was, Man. It was a female voice. Yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. And then at the end of it, it's just Kurt Russell standing there with the eye patch, and he says, "Your rules are beginning to piss me off." Wasn't that Adrian Barbeau doing that voice? Yes, I was about yeah, to tell you that. I was yeah. like, "It's Adrian Barbeau." Yeah. Like I fucking oh, god, I love my her. Heart. I know, right? My I was heart. like, Adrian Barbeau. <laughs> yeah. I pine, I perish. <laughs> yeah, but she was in. An, she's in that first episode of Creep Show on Shutter. Yeah, I it's thought, so fucking good. Yeah. I was so hyped when I saw her. I was like, Adrian yeah, Barbeau, yeah. I love you. She still looks amazing. She still looks so great, dude. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, man, they they uh, uh, they they make their way through the alien base. I guess. <laughs> well, Red helps them. Yeah, and. <laughs> And th- this is the part that, that it's funny, man, because I haven't seen this movie in a couple of years. And for some reason, I don't know why, but I always forget the scene where they where they go to the transport room. Yeah. And actually yeah. See, because there's nothing sci there's nothing overtly sci fi. No. Like it's 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 a fucking signal. Yeah. They're jamming your brain. They're jamming the signal, right? Like yeah. the most sci fi thing you see is the aliens and the black and white and the And the signal and the that's jamming right the that. brain. But yeah. you never but you didn't you didn't you never see this is the only part of the movie where you actually see a true sci fi element, which mm. is a teleporter. Yeah. You yeah, know? Yeah. Which seems strangely out of place for some in my mind. Like well, for one, me. one of them teleports earlier on. Yeah. Like one of them, like the the one who like rats on him, the, the we, I've got one that can see. Yeah, yeah. And like she like yeah. Blah, blah, blah. yeah, but it's not it's not as as blatant as it is in this scene where like he turns oh, no, into he, a little ball and then he just flies like, yeah. off. You know? 
and and I don't know that that always that always kind of kind of catches me off guard. But you know, it's it, it's it part does of the, the the ending comes rather abruptly, very quickly, and, and it ends with such a like like upbeat yet mm-hmm. very down note. Yeah, uh, it's, it's which it's, is which is like what so every great do. sci-fi does. Yeah, every like, great it's sci-fi so hard does. to accomplish in a in yeah. a in a film because you can write it in a book. Yeah, you, know, you can write a really amazing sci-fi ending that won't come off as fucking weird or stupid because you yeah. followed this journey so far. Yeah. Whereas this, like, it could have, it it's really could have, but I I feel like it's far more like tragic in its ending. It's a perfect ending in it, my it, opinion. Yeah, I was it's gonna a say, perfect like, but ending it's, in my it's opinion. It's absolutely like. Perfect for the movie. Yeah. So uh, they shoot. They they basically start shooting their way through. Yeah. Uh, and they they meet up with with uh, Meg Foster's character. I think mm. her name is Helen. Again. Yeah, it's Helen. It's Helen, right? Yeah. So they meet up with her and like, oh, good, you're you're with us now. Now you can help us blow up the the signal and stop the signal, right? Right, right. And as they're making their way through, they 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 go through a uh, I guess it's like a like a like a staircase stairwell yeah. going up. And she kills uh, Keith David, dude. Like that she, dirty she, motherfucker. She she basically shoots him in the head, like yeah. from behind. Yeah, she's in the back of the head. Uh, yeah, and and like that that caught me up the first time and I saw that. That, that legitimately pissed right. me off the first time when I was right? a kid. Like I was super yeah, mad about dude. that. I was like, but he's got a wife and kids. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a goddamn wife and kids. Yeah. Like, yeah. And and he makes his way up, and oh, this is so heartbreaking, man, because like he's pointing the gun at the satellite. Yeah. He's like, "You guys make it up, okay." And yeah. like like he's there waiting for for them whatever and then uh, she shows up with the gun pointed at him yeah and what did she say She's like, like I can't even remember the line directly it was just yeah. like like there's no beating them yeah like like, like this no, is the way it is like, this is just the way it's always yeah. been the way it is like the way it's always gonna be and the sooner you fall in line uh, like the better Holly which is, her name is Holly Holly, Holly okay yeah. I thought it was Helen yeah, too yeah no, no, Holly I knew it started with an H though yeah so so um. Then like the helicopters show up or whatever, like they're 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 going crazy, and dude, what happens? Like I know he shoots the 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 satellite. He well, he shoots her. He shoots her. He right? shoots her, and then he he points the gun to the satellite, and uh, they're telling him to like put the gun down, the gun and yeah. like get down on the ground. Yeah, and he fucking pops the satellite, and they snipe him from the helicopter. Yeah, like they fucking shoot him, and then like he hits the ground, and the satellite explodes yeah. like on top of the building. But when, with exploding the satellite. He breaks the signal that's been jamming everybody's brain. Yeah, yeah. So now you don't need the sunglasses yeah. anymore. Now and everybody can color, and everything's in color. Yeah. And now everybody, which can is a great see visual, these. man. I love it's it. Such a great visual. And everybody can see all these things for what they are. Yeah. And like, there's this one part that I fucking absolutely love in that moment because they, it ends with clips of people doing yeah. their everyday things. But now they're seeing everything for what it is. Yeah. So they're seeing these people, these monsters, these creatures that have yeah. integrated with their society <laughs> and there's the scene. The, yeah they, well there's this one really fucking fantastic scene where they use a dummy uh-huh. and they just prop it up next to a bar uh-huh. and he's watching the news on the tv and it's the two reporters with the obey sign between yeah. them and they're just talking about like the regular ongoings of the day because they don't fucking know that everybody can see them yeah so this dude's just sitting there like watching like it's a dummy but yeah. it's it's of the fucking monster and everybody's like what the fucking <laughs> they're like fuck like at him. everybody's staring at him and this like it, it's so good because it's like the thing is a real person yeah that hasn't realized that everyone's staring at him yet he's like what do i have a boogie yeah like <laughs> and it's so fucking funny because everybody around him is like dude what the fucking fuck like <laughs> and then the very last one is he showed this this topless woman just woman just riding this guy and then she looks down and sees she's on top of an alien. And what does he say? He's like, what's wrong, baby? Hey, hey baby, what's wrong? <laughs> and then the movie Credits. Ends. Like, what the fuck? It, it's so good. Like, oh, how would you like to be the person to wake up fucking that thing? Like, <laughs> that know. blows. Oh, man. And, and it, that's like the perfect visual of everybody waking up. Like, humanity is that woman. And the guy's yeah. like, hey, babe, what's wrong? And for lack of a better term now, everybody against their fucking will is, quote yeah. unquote, woke. Woke. Yeah, exactly. The right way of being woke. Right. That's you why know? it says on the wall, they live, we sleep. Yeah. Life. And now we're awake. So, unfortunately, this movie didn't really do too good at the box office. No, it fucking tanked. Um, it opened... I wouldn't, I wouldn't say it tanked, but it like yeah. it sure shit didn't make the money they thought it was going to. I think it opened around the same time that Who Framed Roger Rabbit came Oh, well, that'll out. fuck you royally. So, uh, yeah, 
Yeah. And uh, John the Carpenter. Last time Disney and Warner Brothers worked, were able to work together before <laughs> Disney consumes them soon. Uh, yeah. That's how we'll get our Roger Rabbit remake. <laughs> right. We just need to consume the Warner Brothers. So in that case, uh, please, Disney, consume everything so we can get the, the, the crossover that we all want, which is uh, the Pink Panther and Little Lulu. And, the uh, Pink Panther <laughs> and Little Lulu. <laughs> So yeah, um, I, I laughed, but I'd watch it. Yeah, I'd watch the hell of that. <laughs> so, um, yeah, man, uh, John Carpenter always said that he was he he was very upset at the at the politics at the time. That he was very uh, against uh, Reagan. Reagan. And, he was and fucking his, dead dead against Reagan and his uh, his his economic policies. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know the whole trickle down thing, like it, which never. It, listen to me when I say this. It never didn't work. Fuck Work. No, it man, never it, worked. It's never going to fucking it work. It didn't work. And it really and and he really wanted to give voice to, to the because at the he was okay. John yeah, Carpenter was good. He was okay. John he, Carpenter at, was at good. At one point he, he wasn't. Yeah. And and, and he, that's the thing. Again, like you said earlier, you send the fucking elevator back. Yeah. And and he uh uh he wanted to, to send the message that, you know, you know, pe- people there are good people. Mm-hmm. At, at every at every level, I guess you could yeah, say absolutely. At, at every level, oh, yeah. you know. But it, it's it's our responsibility to make sure that we don't that we don't fall asleep, that we don't fall into the trap of just being a mindless drone, right. going about our lives while all these all these uh, 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 things happen in the background. Mm-hmm. And I think he did a good job good good job doing that with this movie. And uh, yeah, it, it, the message kind of hits you over the head, kind of hard. But yeah. it has to. It has yeah, to do it has that. To, yeah. It can't be. It can't be uh, uh, any less subtle than it is, or else it right. wouldn't work. Right. You know. And and he did that with 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 the thing, like the 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 message of the thing. It wasn't as subtle as it was this. Like the thing yeah. was more of a horror. Like yeah, it was, it was far more of a horror movie. But it was still like hits you with the message, like be careful who you trust. Yeah. Whereas this one, it's very like don't fucking trust anybody. Yeah. And and this movie, I think, has come into prominence, especially in the last decade or so, man. Like, I, I don't yeah. know, I don't know what happened. I think it was, I think it was the the Bush years kind I, of well, brought this they, movie back. It, it was, yeah, like sometime around the the Bush era, there was uh, an artist drawing politicians, like with the the they live alien faces, mm-hmm. like before. Yeah, uh, the the whole obey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. like that tor- that sort of, which is so funny that that became a thing. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like that became an advertising like thing, which I was like, that you you understand. Forget it. You know, like <laughs> uh irony. Define irony. It fucking falls flat on some people. It yeah. really fucking does. And like it's <laughs> I don't know, man. It's so weird because like I I I I don't want to call myself a, a struggling artist, uh-huh. whereas I just like to call myself like me. Like yeah. I, I and I make I like to make art and yeah. in any kind of way that I can, whether it's writing or painting, drawing, anything. Mm-hmm. Like I think what we do here. Is yeah. art like discussing? We're discussing of art, is, yeah. Like and and like, it makes me laugh when like people look up to stuff like let's say like Banksy, uh-huh. okay? Like Banksy, they they they've they've sort of figured us out, mm-hmm. and it sucks because it satisfies a lot of us. Where it doesn't satisfy someone like me, it kind of pisses me off. Mm-hmm. Like something like Banksy. Something like Banksy infinitely pisses me off. I think he's the biggest fucking hack on the planet. <laughs> really? I'm gonna say. I'm gonna tell you why. Because this is how fucking art works. The art mm-hmm. world, quote unquote. Mm-hmm. Like this guy is a mediocre artist at best. I know okay. people down here who are fucking superior to what this guy can create. Mm-hmm. And he makes interesting stuff. He totally does. He made the, you know, keep your coins, I want change. Yeah. Which was fucking like huge among the, the I'm going to change the world crowd down here. Yeah. Like the I'm offended for fucking everybody crowd. Mm-hmm. And that's fine. It made a huge impact. The, mm-hmm. Some of his art made a huge impact. Yeah. Here's a reason his fucking art made a huge impact. And I don't know who the guy is, but he's friends with a fucking billionaire. Like the, That's why okay. nobody knows who Banksy is. Uh-huh. is because he's friends with those, these elitist fucking assholes. So what he did was he went to his billionaire fucking friend and said, Hey, I've got these pieces of art that I'd love to sell for fucking ridiculous amounts of money. So what does his billionaire friend do but call another billionaire friend who's an art appraiser? There you, you get, go. You get a fucking yeah. art appraiser who goes, okay, now Banksy's art is worth, mm, let's say, fucking a million dollars. One of his mm-hmm. pieces of art is worth a million dollars. Cool. So now this piece of art is worth a million dollars. Why? Because this billionaire said it's worth a billion dollars. So the billionaire in the middle takes a fucking million dollars and says, fine, I'll buy Banksy's million dollar art. He buys it. Banksy makes a million dollars. He donates it. 
Yeah. Now it's now I can Tax write it off in my fucking yeah. taxes. Yeah. So I made my friend a million. I get to keep a million. I get a million back. Yeah. It's a but see, load of but see, fucking bullshit. But see, that's the game, dude. It is. That's the game. And, and and it's only a game for the people at the top. That's what pisses me off. That's why that's why this movie fucks with my head sometimes. Like, <laughs> because it's so true to life. And it's in that, that way. And fucking spawn. <laughs> I had to do one more. I had to yeah. do one more. Martin no, no, goddamn like, Sheen. Because because she because uh, uh, the Meg Foster character, mm-hmm. uh, she no, uh, it, it was the, the the red character. Yeah, he's like George he's Flowers. like yeah, like like the world's gonna end anyway. Why can't we just get our piece of the yeah, pie? Yeah, like why don't you just want your own little slice of it? Yeah, like like why, like what's so wrong with that? Right, you know, and like and then you know Banksy does all that stuff, and then he turns around and he sells a a, a picture a picture that big about the size of a postage stamp. Yeah. For for fifty million dollars, and yeah. then he immediately shreds it afterwards. Yeah, but it doesn't matter. You know? They wrote it off. Yeah, exactly. Like whoever he sold it to, <laughs> if you have fifty million dollars to buy a fucking post-it note, you're fine. Yeah, you're doing fine so, in life. So they fucking wrote that off. It was destroyed. It was one of those like, oh my god, Banksy it so was insured. It was insured. Yeah, and I'm yeah. like, it was fucking insured. Everybody made money off of that publicity stunt. That guy yeah. is so fucking full of shit that if I ever found him, mm-hmm. I'm going to turn him upside down and fertilize my fucking yard with him. And that's like, why he never shows his face. That's anybody, why he never shows his face because he's <laughs> fucking fake, dude. Like, Did it's a bunch story? of shit. Did you hear that story about that, uh, about about this, the, this couple of friends, they went to a uh, an art gallery mm-hmm. and just as a joke, they put a pineapple on a table. Oh yeah. And yeah, then the yeah, next yeah. day, they went back and somebody had put a piece of glass around the pineapple. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's fucking like it's funny until you realize that like you spend so much time mm-hmm. and effort into wanting to be a successful artist. I have a friend who fucking like she she's fucking graduated like with a degree in art. She has a license to teach okay. and she fucking makes her money by I think she runs a restaurant. Like mm-hmm. and it's hard because I tell my brother my brother wants to be an art teacher. Okay. And my dude. Like I've just started hanging out with my brother recently. Like mm-hmm. we are 16 years apart in age. Like I've mm-hmm. I've never known us to really have anything in common until now. Yeah. I had no idea what a fucking insane and amazing artist this kid is in mm-hmm. all fucking aspects of You everything. hardly ever do, man. Yeah, like, like on, like straight on, up. on canvas, he makes these um like he he takes fungo pops mm-hmm. and he makes custom ones. You showed them. that you, yeah, you put like that the, the Marty on. Scroll he yeah, made yeah. for me. Like he he made some he made that was amazing, uh-huh. and he made that for me, and like he he puts real time and effort into it, and like even he knows that he needs something to fall back on. Yeah, like he's even said, I want to try being an art teacher. If that doesn't work, I'll be an architect. Mm-hmm. And like the fact that he wants to fall back on architect, yeah. like that's solid money. That's for sure. The other day I'm, t- I'm, I'm outside and I'm drawing on my pad. Like I'm, mm-hmm. I draw all the time yeah. and I'm out there drawing and I tell him like, Hey man, like, do you want a drawing pad? And he's like, no, not really. And he, I'm like, why? And he's like, I don't really like drawing pads. I only like to draw on canvases. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And he's like, when I get the urge to draw something, I'll go get a canvas. The other day he got the urge to draw the New York skyline. And he oh, stu- wow. and he like, he sat there and mathematically measured everything out on the fucking canvas. So that none of the buildings look oblong or like out yeah. of place, like nothing. He's, wow. he's building, he's drawing the city of New York to perfection, like on this canvas. And like Banksy fucking made a post-it <laughs> note and someone <laughs> gave him fucking $50 million for it. It's a fucking insult to people like my brother. Yeah. Like it's an insult. My, dude, he drew a fucking picture of space with dots. Yeah. Like he drew hands with, in dots. Like, there are wow. artists out there who do amazing things like that. The fact that nobody's giving somebody like Alex Ross, who's a comic book artist, the fact that nobody's given him fucking fifty million dollars yeah. for one of his unbelievably realistic like portrayals of literally any fucking character in comic book history, yeah. up to and including the fucking Shadow and the Phantom. Yeah. Like if it had a cape and a mask, he's drawn it. And he's made it look really amazing. His picture of the Justice League is my favorite all time. Yeah. Like of and like, like the, the picture that everybody sees of the Joker holding Harley Quinn. Yeah, it's Alex She's Ross. looking at him lovingly like, yeah. and he's wearing that black tuxedo. That is Alex Ross. Yep. The fact that no one's given him $50 million for one of his paintings is fucking absurd. I'm sure he's doing good, man. I'm, I'm, sure, I'm, I'm sure not, I'm not fucking, mm-hmm. yeah, I'm sure he's doing just yeah. fine. Like, but like, fuck Banksy. <laughs> okay. And like, fuck that. that it's a load of yeah. bullshit. And, and it makes me so mad that that's the system. And mm-hmm. we're just supposed to fucking accept that. Mm-hmm. And that's what this movie 
really fucking shows is yeah. that you're right. You are just supposed to sit and accept this. I literally had this argument with my mother today, mm -hmm. like where she's like, just sit and just fucking take it. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not built to fucking take a reaming up the ass like this. <laughs> like I can't fucking sit here and be quiet about shit. Yeah. Like I have to say something I've always had to say something like, yeah. and, and it fucking sucks and it gets me fucked over. And there's some fucking assholes out there that fucking laugh at me and think it's really funny. Yeah. And that's fine. Like, look how successful I am. Like, you're that successful because yeah. you kept your ass in the air and your mouth shut this entire time. <laughs> Fuck you. Like, good for you. Like, yeah. I'm not going to do that. Like, different strokes for different folks. And that shit ain't me. Like, yeah. I ain't going to fucking sit there and kiss ass and fucking take shit when it comes to me. And that's what drives me fucking kind of crazy sometimes, especially in this, in this movie where, like, there's a scene. I don't know if you've caught it. They refer to Nada and Frank as the terrorists. Yeah, as a terrorist. Like, that's as true. terrorists. Yeah. Like that's fucked up. And that's that fucking, and I've been telling people for years, like that's that joke in this country. Yeah. Like when you want to get rid of somebody, you call, call them, them terrorists. terrorists. Yeah. Like, and that turn, everybody turns their head and like terrorists. They called Martin Luther King terrorists. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like they called these people fucking terrorists, man. Like it's yeah. still there. Like the word still like, floats around and some people will still argue with you. Like, no, this motherfucker's a terrorist. <laughs> and like, I, it's fine. I get mm -hmm. it. Like, it's a shitty thing that they do. It's a shitty game that they fucking play. Yeah. But they play it. And there's always going to be assholes like mm -hmm. Nada and Frank. Yeah. And fucking people like fucking me who are always going to fucking sit there. I'm not going to go around shooting people, yeah. but I am going to fucking sit there and I'm going to point out bullshit when I fucking see it. Yeah. Like, it's a fucked up world we live in. And, and the fact of the matter is a lot of people see bullshit and not only do they accept it as truth, mm -hmm. they fucking peddle it as mm -hmm. truth. And the worst part is there's a lot of people that agree with them. Yeah. Like there is a dumb fucking idiot. I don't care. There's a dumb fucking idiot in charge of this country right now. Mm. It's 20 goddamn 20 and there's a fucking idiot in charge of this country. And that fucking idiot is going to end up controlling it for the next four years too. Because yeah. the idiots on the other side are arguing with each other. Yeah. And it's fascinating to watch. Cause I, and I, I even put the other day, like it's fascinating to watch the fall of the Roman empire in high death. <laughs> like it's kind of amazing. Yeah. And, and, and we are, we're watching, like, we're, we're, vomit we're short vomitariums, bro. Like the, the <laughs> empire is fucking crumbling and there's people, I've been saying it since they, they elected this asshole. He could set the fucking country on fire and somebody's going to go, well, he's keeping us warm. Yeah. Like, well, that's what he's doing right now. Dude. Yeah. That, that's we we are on fire right now. <laughs> and it's funny, man, because like, there's a continent on fire. Like we get, there's a whole <laughs> continent on fire right now. Look it up. Yeah. Like we, like we have, we have everything that we need okay right the thing is we we live okay and i will say this man we do live theoretically in the greatest country in the world theoretically. okay theoretically we live in the greatest country in the world i love my country yeah, i love absolutely. america i love being an american man and i'm gonna point out when the some problem, in charge of it. the problem the problem is not that we are we are short of things the problem is not that we are 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 short of resources, food, water, stuff, clothing, whatever we need. The point, the 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 thing, the problem is that we we are short on access right. to that. Yeah, that is what we need. And one of the greatest things that we have, the greatest weapons, which is also our greatest enemy, is free speech. Right. Okay. That is our greatest weapon, mm -hmm. but it can be very easily turned around against us. Yeah. And See, that's why we need to stay. Stay visual. One of my all-time favorite like films mm -hmm. uh, is uh, The People versus Larry Flint. I love that movie. Yeah. Like I fucking adore that movie. And I remember one time like that watching Gore it. Gore or I don't know who. No, who I think that's that Milos Foreman. Milos Foreman. There. Yeah, 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 I'm pretty yeah. sure it's Milos Foreman. One of those German guys. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember watching that movie and fucking being so taken by fucking the things that Woody Harrelson would say uh -huh. and how a lot of it really was directly from Larry yeah. Flint. Like one of my favorite lines that he delivers, which Larry Flynn actually said, like, why do I have to keep fucking going to jail for your freedom? Yeah. Like, and it's true. So I remember thinking like, man, like how fucking revolutionary, how fucking brilliant. And then somebody pointed out to me one time and it fucked my head up so bad. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember who this woman was. I was at, I think it was at one of, uh, Christina's birthdays. Okay. I mean, there was a lot, there was always, there's always somebody there that you don't know that you end up talking to. <laughs> yeah. So I ended up talking to this girl and she, and I was talking to her about that movie. And that's, yeah, it is Milos Foreman because yeah. I was telling her that outside of One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, uh -huh. that's my favorite Milos Foreman film. Uh -huh. And she had said, because like, I had said that he was revolutionary and brilliant in the things that he had said. Like he was so unafraid of going to jail. Mm -hmm. Like he was going to keep saying these things and fucking like fighting for freedom of speech. And she's like, well, yeah, but Nambla cited him. And I go, what? 
And she goes, Nambla. If you don't know what Nambla is, that's the mm. North American Man, Man Boy, Boy Love Association. That's a very real fucking disgusting thing. It's not thing. the North American uh, Marlon Brando look alike? No, I'm, I'm not anymore. <laughs> but also a great South Park joke. Yeah. But um, <laughs> they fuck, those disgusting fucks wrote a book. Yeah. And I, apparently you can just order that fucking book. I have no idea. I would never look for such fucking smut or garbage. Yeah. And like, and that's if, the double edged sword, my friend. Exactly. Yep. And because, you know, I, I meet fucking people who are like, you know, it's a fucking mental disorder and like, and we should treat it as such. Like, I understand that, but some people need to be killed. I don't know what to tell you. Mm-hmm. Like, some people just need a shot in the arm and thrown into a dumpster. Like, I'm sorry your brain is mm-hmm. fucked up. Yeah. Like, but if you're going to hurt a little kid, yeah. like, you deserve to have your eyeballs gouged out at the very fucking least. Like, fuck all of that. And I'm sitting here fucking, and she's telling me this that like, when they fought, for the right to put that book out, mm-hmm. they cited Larry Flint's case. Mm-hmm. And because of the Larry Flint case, they got to release that fucking yep. book. That made me so fucking angry, but that's the truth. Freedom of speech is a double-edged sword. You're yep. fucking, it's, it's freedom of speech, not freedom of consequence. Yep. And like, like unfortunately, we have a lot of dumb fucking people who have a big following down here yeah. who say really stupid fucking shit sometimes yeah. on the internet. And people mm-hmm. just like, oh, it's true. He cited Breitbart. Yeah. Fuck Breitbart. <laughs> like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Like when, like when it's, it's they, and then they say stuff that if you say a lie enough times, it it's, becomes, it the, becomes truth. the truth. Exactly. Okay. And that, and yeah, like that's, that's, that's the double edged sword. And yeah, that's the beauty of this movie, man, is that we, we can start from what, what talking about the movie yeah. to deep conversations like this. And, but it's true though. Like it, you, it really does put you in a situation of what the fuck would you do? Like, let's say you are well off. Uh-huh. You're doing okay. Yeah. You're working at a job where you're, you're at res- the top you're, of the you're, you're respected enough to be put in a position of power uh-huh. where nobody beneath you can really fuck with you. The only people who can fuck with you are the people above you. And the people above you don't give a shit so long as you're producing results. Yeah. And you're producing results. You're a good person. You don't fuck with your employees. You pay them a good rate. Mm-hmm. You fucking take care of these people. You're doing all right for yourself. Mm-hmm. Like your fucking your wife and kids are okay. Yeah. <laughs> and fucking all of a sudden you find these fucking sunglasses. Yeah. And you put them on. And now you know the fucking truth. Yeah. And now that they know you know the truth. Would you rock that boat? Would you rock that boat? Would yeah. you ruin yourself to put it out there mm-hmm. for people to know this is really fucking happening right yeah. now? Like, would you risk all of that? But see, there are people who are shouting from the rooftops, the emperor has no clothes. Yeah. But people aren't listening. Exactly. You know? And that's the fucked up part. So I guess that's your answer. And and that's the thing, is in this society, you get people who bite and fight and kick and scratch, and all of a sudden, people are listening to them, but there's so many people who are already just comfortable where they're at, that Mm -hmm. they're like, you're fucking crazy, like, shut up. Like nobody wants to hear it. Yeah. It's the fucking the the goddamn Titanic sinking. <laughs> yeah. Like and the only ones who are jumping out of the goddamn boat are the rats. <laughs> like it's yeah. fucking impressive. It, yeah. it, it th- this movie really does provoke a lot of thought and it goes so far beyond Republican and Democrat mm, and, yeah. and fucking whatever else. See, that's like. what they want you to think. They want you to think either you're Republican or Democrat. Right. And they, if you they, go down the middle or or if you see in, in the you see the world in anything other than black and white, you're right. a troublemaker. You're a troublemaker. You're yeah. what they call like no joke, a political agitator. Exactly. Like yeah. and that's fucked up. Like yeah. like you're right. It, they, it's it, it's it's a crime now to rock the boat. Yeah. They fucking shot protesters who were telling people like the oil is going to come out of that fucking thing and it's going to mm-hmm. fucking spill everywhere. Yeah. Like, I don't know, man. It's <laughs> like, little... like, like, uh, uh, I, I, I just wanted to bring this up real quick because this, this, this goes with our, with, with our discussion. Uh, like this 16 year old uh-huh. who is, who, uh, Greta Thunberg, who is going around. She's not, she's not, uh, forcing she's countries just, to do anything. She's, she's not saying doing anything. She's just, hey, look, this is what's happening. This is what scientists are saying. I am doing my part to try to make things better. Right. And then you have some asshole like Sebastian Gorka saying, uh, her name is Thunder Thighs. Yeah. 
you know, and somebody should take her to the back and do things to her. If that guy you know? legitimately needs to be torn apart by a pack of fucking wild jackals. <laughs> yeah. Like for real. Like I wish the absolute fucking worst on him. Never yeah. mind if I could wish cancer on somebody. Yeah. I changed it's, my mind it's, about it's, that real quick. Yeah, it's Mitch McConnell. It's like shoot it's like shooting somebody for telling you that it's raining outside. Right. Like straight up, dude. Yeah. And and <laughs> how ironic that that's what happened to uh to Nada in this movie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No shit. <laughs> yeah. So so anyway, man, uh like the, the they live, man. It's 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 one of those movies that I'll never get tired of. Yeah, I mean, and, yeah. and and for some reason it came out in 1988. We are now 32 years later. Yeah. Okay. 32 years after this movie came out and it's still as relevant today. Mm-hmm. And then it's timeless. Yeah. You cannot tell other than that apartment that it takes place in uh, the 1980s. No okay. Shit. So anyway, we'll I'll um, be watching it on laptops by the fire soon. <laughs> Where do you think I saw it? Dude? Well, I'll, we'll all be <laughs> acting it out. Yeah, I'll be there. I'll be there, like uh, like Ben Stiller in Tropic Thunder. This is gonna <laughs> this is gonna end up happening in in twenty years. Is, is yeah. people are gonna have to act out old fucking movies, and they're gonna shoot you in the fucking street for act, for acting out certain movies. <laughs> yeah, like Ghostbusters is a thought crime. <laughs> they just fucking oh, execute you on site when like, they hire the judges. Like, like in what's that movie, Rain of Fire, where they where they where they're uh, retelling oh, the story yeah, the Star of Star Wars? Wars. <laughs> I was like, yeah. tell people like you want to see something amazing, watch Rain of Fire, like Dragon. Darth Vader and Batman have a lightsaber fight. You don't right. know what you're missing. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> like, right. You don't know, man. Anyway, guys, well, uh, that'll that'll about wrap it up for this episode of the uh, the Movie Know It All podcast. And thanks um, for coming to our TED Talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, like we said before, man, this, the, these views are our own, uh, nobody else's, and uh, no, you these know, are legitimately my goddamn le- views. <laughs> yes. Trust me, <laughs> our own our own views, man. Everybody has them, and uh, their views are just like assholes, dude. Everybody has them, and they all stink. That's true. So, <laughs> That's true. So like, these, are, these are my opinions. Don't fucking listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> like, there's a reason. There's a re- I'm a security guard, bro. Like, don't know, fucking listen dude. to me. I'm already angry enough as it is, man. For Jeez, real, no, dude. No. Like, don't, don't pay attention. Come here for the show. Stick yeah. around for the argument. Yeah. Like, have a fight with your significant other after this. Yeah. Like, somebody somebody, do me a favor and, and animate this argument in, in one of those, like, stick figure theater styles. <laughs> like, that'll be so just cool. Just me just screaming at the <laughs> microphone about right. Spawn. Like, <laughs> like, like what's, what's the, what, have you seen those videos where this guy, he he takes clips from movies, like audio clips, and he, oh, anim- yeah. he reanimates the stick them? stick figure ones? Yeah, yeah that's yeah. fucking great. <laughs> that's hilarious, man. Anyway, uh, I'm Will. I'm Bob. And that has been the Movie Know It All podcast here on RGB Titan Radio. We are the 9 5 six we'll see you guys next time the views and opinions expressed by our guest host and or djs do not we repeat do not reflect the official policy or position of rgv titan radio our affiliates or our sponsors rgv titan we are the 956